Welcome to the 2022 Rewind video, part one. It's over three hours long, so get yourself some popcorn, get comfortable and enjoy the show. We have nitros, petrols, laminators, the sausage, the monster truck build, speed cars and much, much more. And the challenge is to get this car to go 100 mile an hour on grass. I originally built this car to beat the official long jump RC world record and we completely annihilated it but unofficially. Oh, that's good. And then I set myself to challenge to make it the world's fastest RC car off-road. This car's already been on fire twice. So, we're gonna fit a lower KV motor. <laughs> Alright, so next we're gonna have a little race, see how we can get on with these. It's not handling that good. I think we've got not enough suspension travel on the front, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. Everybody ready? Ready? You're going to lose. Ready, steady, go! Oh, it's got the power. It's definitely got the power, that's for sure. But it's just too bouncy. I think we're in third, though. Second, we're in second. Oh, oh we're in second. Oh. <laughs> Considering we've got no suspension, that wasn't too bad. Next, let's see how fast it can go. All right, here we are. We now have the hoons on there. Let's see how fast it can go. That was nowhere near flat out. Let's see what it done. 73. That's pure rubber. What happened? <laughs> Steering problem. So next we're having a drag race. Let's see who's gonna win. Ready, steady, go. Carnage and I come last. Right, ready, steady, go! Oh, oh. Right, gear it up time. So now we're going to take this pinion gear out and fit one well, that's a little bit bigger. We're going to go from this size to go for 30. Right, place. How do? Boom, plug it in and back in action. All right, here we go, start. I thought we go before actually. 93, oh. All right, we go again. All right, we're not gonna go again, we're done. Finish it. So we've got these Proline Badlands here and we put some fishing line around them and glued it on to help stop them from expanding. Trouble is, sometimes it comes off, you break the wheels and it's a lot of work. It takes like almost a whole day to prepare a set of tires. We could not buy any tires that come already pre-belted. Up until now, now we do. So I got these from my local model shop, Redfin Models. These are off-road tires and they're belted, so hopefully they shouldn't expand too much. And hopefully they're gonna be good for 100 mile an hour off-road. So these ones here are the rock form tires. And we also got a set of the Tomahawks and the Tomahawk ones, they look even more off-roady. So I think we're gonna go for a set of these. Oh, check it out, guys. If it doesn't do 100, then we got this. What we got? Look. You ain't. If that's not doing 100 today. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I thought oh they were supposed God. to be. <laughs> they ballooned, didn't they? They did. The front one ballooned hard. So that was 51 mile an hour. Yeah. I think Maybe you should have. Um, done it on a concrete just to bed them tires in a little bit maybe because they're pretty slippery aren't they they're not grippy that's about half throttle oh my god <laughs> oh no oh, blown it yes no ruined. ruined that's supposed to be belt it is belted look yeah and insane amount of power what have we got 
71. 71. So it's traction, that's the issue, isn't it? Oh dear. We might try that again at some point in the future, but next video, we're gonna move on to that longboard, the sausage. We've got bigger motors in it, we've geared it up. Theoretically, it should go about 110 mile an hour. In practice, no idea. This is the project world's fastest RC car. And in the last video, we smashed it up. So we hit the joint in the runway, air got under it, and game over. So in this video, we're gonna fix it, and then we're gonna take it out again. We found a brand new location, and hopefully get closer to our goal of 203 mile an hour, which is the speed that we need to do to break the world record. So just to recap on the car, this is based on a Arma Limitless. I put twin motors in here. So one motor goes direct drive straight to the front diff, and the other motor goes direct drive straight to the rear diff. So that gets away with all the transmission, all the center drive shafts, there's a lot more space in the chassis. Then we have two great big MGM speed controllers. These are the same speed controllers that they use in Robot Wars. And they can take 15 cell LiPos each. So 30 cell LiPos in total. That's like 63 volts per ESC, and there's two of them. Oh, here's some more damage. So these here are the batteries that this car runs on. Now, most RC cars would run on one of these. Some of the really fast RC cars, they would run on two of these. My RC car runs on six of them. All of these, that's a lot of power. Oh, check out these speed controller cables when we crashed. But I've got a new wiring system that I learnt from Raz Schifrin, so we're gonna try that on that. It's gonna get rid of a whole load of wires, make it a whole lot neater, and get rid of all these spaghettis. Right, that's enough waffle, let's get fixing. And then we're gonna see how fast it can go. Next, we've got to repair some of this brokenness. So we're just gonna use some duct tape and some glue. So I just wanna temporarily repair the car, and then once we're happy with it and the car's stable, then we can take it all apart and repair it properly. So next, we've got to remount the light post. Boom, now they're in there solid. There we go, we've got one side done, so now we've got two wires coming out of the ESC, and then we join all the batteries together with these little jumper wires here. If you compare this, how neat this setup is, compared to how it used to be on this side, and we've got all these wires everywhere. That is so much neater. And before it was really difficult to get the body to fit, now it fits straight over. Right, let's repair the body. The back of the body's broken off, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut it off completely. All that we need now is a new set of tires. Boom, and there we go, ready for action. So plucked it all in, let's make sure that it all works. So steering, lovely, power. Guys, that is gonna go. If it stays on the floor, if it doesn't take off, I think this has got some serious speed coming up. It could really do with a proper rebuild, but we wanna run it a couple of times first, make sure it's stable. We don't wanna fully rebuild it, only for it to crash again. That'll do. So it's been a few days, and I think we've found a mile long road, perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. Trouble is, it's on an industrial estate and it's about a two and a half hour drive. So if we get there and there's lorries on there or trucks on there, or we get kicked off. It's... We are on location and check this out guys. We've got all the way down there. It's almost perfectly flat, all the way down to there. Hopefully we're not gonna crash and hopefully the security won't come and kick us off. So we've got to run quick. It's private, you... isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Dave, Dave found a sign, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, it's a bright, bright yellow one as you drive in. I've never seen. It's <laughs> massive bright yellow sign. So this is a private road. If security catch us, well, then we're probably going to get kicked off. There is. Security did catch us. Then you want to see someone with their out. So as we arrived, hardcore Dave greeted us with his bare buttocks, and the security saw it on the CCTV. It's driven two hours. You've got to be able to just, just do one little quick pass. Just ready to go. Look. It's your fault, Dave. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have put your bum out. Oh, we just drove two hours to get here, man. Can't we just do one? Just do one. We'll just one and we'll go. One pass Please. and go. Not for this. Come and look. Break a world record, 200 miles an hour. Come and look. Uh, I can't, they've called me down here. <laughs> oh, we drove two hours to get here, man. Yeah, look, look up, got up at six o'clock in the morning, especially. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you, I'm afraid. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dave's butt destroyed. Yeah. Guys, I've tried so hard to find locations to run this car. Here in the UK, there are just no straight roads anywhere. And when we do find one, it's either too busy 
Oh, it's private land, all the security there. Guys, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. And it's proven to become really impossible. In this video, we turn this into this and then take it out for a rip. So this is the Traxxas UDR, the best radio control desert racer in the world. In my opinion. So in this video, we're going to restore it. Then we're going to have a little look at it to see what makes this car so special. And then we're going to take it out for a rip. The body shell has completely had it. But it is very old and it has actually lasted surprisingly well. These steering links are relative weak spot. I have fixed it because I broke it. But I fixed it with the wrong one. And now look, the wheels are doing this. So, we've got some upgraded one. One. Look at that guys, looks almost like brand new again! to see how fast it can go. Alright, stop. 46 mile an hour. YouTube. That's Three, better. One, oh, <laughs> what happened? Oh dear. The poor body. What happened? Round number two. I'm oh, ready when you look ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Oh my god. It's not looking good. It's just a bad time to say it could be worse. <laughs> oh look, what about my I've got a new body as well. Oh, I knew that, no. That could have been worse. <laughs> Check out this UDR. He's built a little water cooling system in there. So he's modified the speed controller for water cooling. We've got a radiator there in the original location with red fin fans. Little water pump in there. And Jason's trying to set it up. What happened? Just sprayed me. <laughs> <laughs> he was bleeding and it went. <laughs> what is it you got in there? Uh, this waterless. <laughs> is it going to be a worthy modification? Zempi has absolutely zero regard for anything mechanical. <laughs> Whoa. Don't get it. Oh, oh she's gone. That's gone. That's gone. Oh, whoa. Oh, How did she come back? Oh! Oh my God! Jesus! What? <laughs> 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 so if the next max is going to last stemp, then it will last anyone. Really? Get him out of there, Jeez. boy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Come on, I'm running out of film. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, comment down below. How long do you reckon it's going to last him? In minutes? <laughs> or seconds? Boom! Get out of here. <laughs> Look at that, it's not even glued on. Tracks is tough, baby. Look, look at that, no glue at all. Oh, we're making a right mess here. This is not how you glue tyres. <laughs> Step definitely needs those training wheels in the back of it. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> 
Oh, your tyre off again. So the tyre comes off again, but Stempy chooses to ignore it. So here we got Stempy's favourite jump. So we got the run up from here all the way across there. And the challenge is you got to clear the road and land on the other side over there. Do you reckon you can do it? Easy. Easy, he says. Yes. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh! <laughs> What's oh happening? Kev, I thought you should be safe. Have a look over it, Kev. I don't know what I'm looking out for if there's anything broken in it. I hope it works. It's alright, isn't it? Here we go, round two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tumble rumble. There we go. Oh, it's still going. It's on wheels. <laughs> Oh, nice! <laughs> oh, <laughs> what happened there, Sam? Oh, I don't know. Sure, Tony, you want that bit? Fun <laughs> <laughs> okay. flip! Here comes Sam! <laughs> oh, oh nice. <laughs> tumble wumble! <laughs> Guys, today we got the engine coming for the monster truck. <laughs> Health and safety at its finest. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got to lift the engine out of the crate. I'm scared, as soon as we lift it, it's going to try and fall over. So this is going to be sketchy. If it goes wrong, it's going to be really bad. I was going to lift it off of these. I rang up Tony from Swamp Thing. He said, no, do not lift it off of these. What did Ian say? Ian said, don't lift it off of those. <laughs> <laughs> it falls on the floor, it's Ian's fault. <laughs> Right, it's not mine. <laughs> oh man, look at that horsepower. My bot bot is going like this. <laughs> that makes that look like a mouse. Yeah, Kev's got shiny balls. <laughs> Would you sit on that? Maybe. <laughs> Would you watch? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's trying to fall over. Is that safe? Yeah, it'll be alright. Right. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> Oh, man, it's my husband. Burned it. Guys, this thing is absolutely mahoosive. Look at the size of it. So I'm going to try and explain to you what it all is and what it all does, but I'm a complete novice, so I'm not really 100% sure what it all is. So if I said something wrong, let me know in the comments. So it's a 540 cubic inch engine built by Richard Midget, who builds all the Monster Jam engines. It's supercharged and alcohol injected V8. It's based on a Chevy engine, but I think there's nothing on here actually Chevy. Everything is aftermarket. We've got aftermarket heads, aftermarket crank, ignition, block, alloy rods. These here are straps in case the supercharger blows off to hold it on. It's got mechanical fuel injection. And if you look here, you can see the injectors going in here. And if you look in here, you'll see them poking out just there, look. So as it sits, it's probably running around about 1500 horsepower. If we change this supercharger pulley here for a smaller one, it's going to overdrive it, spin the supercharger faster. We can suck more air into the engine or force it in. And that should get our horsepower up to around about 2,000. So next, we've got to get the helmet off. So there's a couple of screws in here that were really hard to get to. Got to make a special little spanner to get in there and take them off. And next, we've got to take these ones off. A couple of fuel pipes and the whole thing, hopefully, will lift off. 
know what that looks like? It looks like a shredder. You know them shredder videos? Yeah, oh, I love them. So what we're is we're moving <laughs> in. Yeah, you will. It's not much, guys. Yes, skills. Oh, no. Next, we got to get the body off because the engine's going to hit it. With worrying and it's just dangling there. <laughs> So there's only millimetres to spare all the way around and the novice forklift driver did not put a scratch in it anywhere. Oh Jesus, that's so Jeez. tight. <laughs> Concentration on his face. He's got a proper serious look on his face. <laughs> Next, we've got some little screws in here that are absolute pig to get to, so we made this. Back in the hole. Next, we've got to fit the fuel pump assembly onto the engine. So here we're attaching the fuel hoses. So next, we've got to plumb in all the water. We've got to put an accu sump in there. We've got a few other bits we've got to plumb up. Some of the stuff we have, some of the stuff we haven't. Oh, we can get these on. So there we go, we've got the front ones on. The idea with these is, is to limit the travel of the shocks. Because if you haven't got these and the shocks get to their full travel, there's a piston inside here. It's only held on with a little bolt or a nut or something and it can easily get ripped off. This protects it. Probably gonna put a zip tie around here just to keep them together. And next, I'm gonna put the back ones on and the rear ones are slightly longer because we've got longer travel shocks on the back. Boom, there we go. So this is the Traxxas Revo 3.3, the world's most user-friendly nitro powered RC car. You see on most nitro RC cars, you've got to stick a glow starter on there and you've got to mess about with pull starters or starting boxes. With this, you just shove that onto there, hit the button and boom, you're running. Sometimes. And although it's really epic, we can make it better. So in this video, that's what we're gonna do. Also, check out what just turned up. This is the engine that we've been waiting for to put onto this monster truck here. So hopefully we're gonna get it fitted in the next couple of days and get a video uploaded. Do you know what you gotta do if you don't wanna miss it? So if you watched the last video, you would have seen that this car is an absolute beast. 
However, the throttle on the brakes, it's a little bit slow. The brakes are really weak. I think that's probably down to a weak servo. So, we've got a JX EcoBoost. It has good specifications. HBR Savage comes with them, and they kept breaking, so I've done the upgrade to get rid of them. The e Revo 2.0 also has them, and they kept breaking, so we took them off. And fitted some heavy duty ones, but they still break. So, we have the RPM True Track conversion. Completely eliminates these, gets rid of them. Problem, hopefully gone. Next, a body. Look how beautiful it looks, and I want to keep it looking beautiful for as long as possible. Trouble is, when you crash on these, I have a tendency of splitting and cracking. So, what are we going to do? Chuck a bit of drywall tape on there, bit of shoe goo, and boom, it's going to last about 10 times longer. Let's get bashing. Here we are on location. Ah! We got crew in the house. He's running out of fuel though. <laughs> Oh, engines come loose. Guys, I love nitro, but not when they're causing problems. Next, we are off to Redfin Models to make a special little modification. Man, what a racket these tyres make. So here we have the main man's gonna make it electric start. So here we are at my local hobby shop, Redfin Models, and Jason has kindly accepted the challenge to try and make this Revo 3.3 electric start from a button on the controller. I'll go back over there out the way. I'm glad someone knows what they're doing. Next, we've got a butcher the wand. That's gotta go on there. Next, we have a BEC. And a BEC puts a voltage down so that we don't fire the receiver. So next we have an RC switch, and apparently we solder this to the board, and then that replaces the button, Contact. and then that gets wired into this switch here, and that is hopefully going to do the glow and the starter motor. Is it going to work? Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh! Oh! <laughs> it's alive! We're going to be putting scooter wheels onto this LCBTQ, whatever it's called, RC car. The LC Racing EMBT. That's what it is. Are we going to get these, chuck them onto there, and then see what it can do? Check it out, perfect. All we gotta do now is get the rest of them on there. Hello. All right, are you ready? Let's have a look to see what it can do. So this car's got a brushless motor system, so it's pretty fast. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? 
<laughs> in a minute, guys, we're going to take it to the skate park, and don't forget, we're going to put them onto the burnout car as well, and hopefully have a bit of a smoke show. No! Oh! Well, so we can get donuts out of it. Oh, they've got too much grip. So here we are on our first location. We're going to give it a quick burn around here and then we're going to hit the skate park. That piece! Yo, look at that go! So now, let's take the wheels off for of this and put them onto the burnout car. Oh my God, that's gonna be ridiculous. So I think we're gonna have to run it with the body off, otherwise we're just gonna destroy it. But inside we have six S LiPo. That means lots of power. A motor, normally found in a car a lot bigger. And we have a line lock. What that means, we can hit a switch, lock the front wheels, there's a disc brake there, look, and then rip a fat burnout. Now, there is gonna work, I guess in a minute. We're gonna find out. Let's get it outside. Here we go. Oh well, that was a failure. But I don't want to be a complete failure. Let's get a set of these on there. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Brandon. I yeah. agree. Over. Oh my god, guys, check out the size of that. Check out the size of this motor, guys, and it's dirt cheap. And we're gonna put it in my buddy AS Steve's X Max. Also, we have a M2C Racing heavy duty motor mount to mount it. Oh, just check out the quality of these parts. So that's going to go in there somehow. That on there. You'll see, you'll see. Ah, look, we got eight S in the house. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Here's his X Max. So now, hopefully, that is going to fit in there. Oh, we've got a knobble in the way. But we have a tool for the job. Right. Don't just don't put your fingers near that bit and you'll be fine. Mm. <laughs> what do you reckon of that tool, Stephen? Yeah, I like it. Beautiful. <laughs> right. Yeah, what? Light a glove. Neil. Question is, can you make it up the staircase? <laughs> Stand back, hold it down there. Oh. Backflip tree. Slower than before, but we can still gear it up. So I have a little play here in the woods. Then we're going to go back and put a big opinion on there. Big opinion means more RPMs to the wheels, means faster X Max. Oh, yeah. That's what we're going to go with anyway. So there's opinion that's on there, and we're going to replace it with our big opinion, more power. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh. <laughs> that went to the moon. Is it alive? Yep, I think we're good. Here we go, flat out. <laughs> I'm a tough. Man, this thing is vicious. Oh! What happened? We're good. Right. 
you hit this at an angle, yeah. then you've got to land on the downslope off that. Oh, I've completely cleared it. I'll have a go. What is it, guys? Let me know in the comments. Is it for Harvey or is it Mojo? Hey, yeah, Steve's challenge. He's got to take a run up from over there, hit this flat out and land in the bush. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh! oh, oh, oh. The old scorched RC, titanium chassis, perfect. Right, do it again, you failed. There we go, that's in the bush. <laughs> oh, he's broken the back off. We're missing some bumper ridge. Yeah, that's all right. Just the back bumper's gone, but it still works. Do you want to jump over your head? Right, you got to try and jump over my head and your head. There we go. Oh, <laughs> man, this is taking a serious punishment. Stephen has a challenge. We're going to stand here, and he's got to jump there and go over our heads. Back out. Oh, <laughs> oh. Nice landing. Give it here, see if I can do it. Yeah, right it's quite a meal. <laughs> so this is the RC car that's supposed to do it all. And it's probably the world's most advanced RC car. So like on the bashers, we have long travel, double wishbone suspension, front and rear, four wheel drive, a heavy duty chassis, and a stupidly, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And like on the crawlers, we have supple tires, a high and low gear transmission, and front and rear diff lockers. We'll show you what that does a bit later. Now the problem is with this car, although it does everything really well, it's a little bit on the slow side. So here's the motor, it's fine for crawling, but if you want to go fast, forget it. So, we have a solution. So this is the Castle Mamba Monster X. And it's supposed to have lots of power. So size-wise, it looks similar size to the original motor, so it should fit in there perfectly. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 that's enough waffle. Let's wrench. We go, let's see if it works. Steering, yes, forward. Oh, oh no! What happened? Oh, poor TOX4, poor Agadaga. Safety first, remove pinion prior to calibration. Hmm. Oh, guys, forward and reverse is back to. God, what's going on? What's trying to say is forward and reverse is back to front. So you've got to plug it into the computer and swap it over. Poor TOX4, poor Agadaga. So with the mess tidied up, we now plug it into the computer and make it drive in the correct direction. Here we go, moment of truth. Will it go forward? Yes. So here we go with the differentials unlocked. And there you go, look. We have lost drive to this side. Should we hit the diff locks? And now we should drive. Oh, going on. You get the idea. Here we go for the staircase of doom. Hill climb test. So now, let's get it out in the real world. Here we are on location, and look, look at the crew. So first here, diff lock. Shim back flip. <laughs> We've got X maxis. No idea what that is. Techno. Techno. Outcast. More toys. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> oh no, we have a zombie apocalypse. Clayton versus Sammy. Easy. Oh, it's not really a basher, but we're bashing it anyway. Oh, 
It's definitely got power now. <laughs> Nearly so flights. Get a nice jump out of it in a minute. Wait, probably need to tone it down a little bit. Have an obstacle, so stick it into low range. Diff locks on. Can we crawl up it slowly? It's near vertical, so probably not. Oh, oh no. More power. Oh no. I think the diffs are clicking, so God knows how long it's going to last for. Right, back into low gear. Can we crawl up this bit? Oh yes, look at that. Oh yes. Here we got an e Revo, which is almost the same as that. That's more the basher one. That one's more the crawler one. So let's see what the difference is off road. Can you make it up for that? <laughs> Easy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, He's going to catch it. <laughs> we have to goalkeepers. Are <laughs> oh, you supposed to catch it? <laughs> Oh, Dave's a winner! <laughs> what is going on here? Oh. Whee! <laughs> Go! <laughs> oh my god! Oxide kit for model cars, and here we have a two cylinder petrol model motorbike engine. Oxide kit, hopefully, it's gonna take it. And helping me, we got my buddy Stempy. Ah, it's me again, boys. Girls. <laughs> well, so it's like a little distributor, isn't it? Oh, little dizzy. Look at that, it's like a little mini version of that. It's got good compression there. Oh, <laughs> what was that the HT leads and all that? Like? Oh, something. CDI or something. Oh, start shaft. That's the start shaft. Put that in the drill. Here's our little nitrous kit. Where's the little um, headers then? And here's the exhaust. See it. Oh, there we are. Right, so we're going to put it all together. Then we're going to start it up. And then we're going to feed it some nitrous. Well, first of all, I think we need to make a mount right, to yes. mount it. Then we've got to wire up this. Then we've got to get the exhaust on. Find the fuel tank. So we've made up these couple of brackets here. Look, to mount it. Cheers, Dev. I'm making an exhaust. Custom exhaust pipe. Here's one I made earlier. TBR Tuscan exhaust. <laughs> right, guys, look at the masterpieces. Twin exhaust. Oh, she's all Tuscan up there, Kim. <laughs> hey? You know that, didn't you? In a minute, we're going to see what that sounds like. Yeah. And we're going to try the nostril. All right, see if this baby works. <laughs> You can have it under one condition. What? We've got to see how fast it goes. Yeah. And we've got to take the skate park and send it to the moon. Okay. Oh, check it out. So we have double wishbone suspension, front and rear. We have coilover shocks, four wheel drive system, brushless power, hoons, and they're not too supple. Rear diffuser. So this is the budget version of the Armour Speed Car. So here we got the infraction. This was the original Armour on-road basher. Which is epic. Which is absolutely epic. One of my favorite RC cars, More quite expensive. So they came out with this platform, which is a lot cheaper. And there's not much difference in size. If that was a 900, you're gonna fucking block. <laughs> <laughs> pest control. <laughs> <laughs> that was one for you, that was. You're the pest. Also in the box. Oh, spoiler. Controller. And optional speed gearing, which we're gonna try later. So steering. Not the fastest. And power. Whoa! 
That is gonna go. All right, enough waffle. Let's go rip. Here we are on location, guys. It is getting really cold now. It's proper windy. We put the high speed wing on there so we can see how fast it goes with that. Oh, that one there, look, ready? Oh, motor's dead. It's locked up. We never break anything on this channel, honest. <laughs> what happened? You killed it. Oh, oh Jesus. Yeah, touch it. No. <laughs> so I came over for that one. So next skate park with that. Here we are, next location. In the world's best skate park. I does work on there. All right, so Vinny has got to hit that there flat out. There we <laughs> That's not supposed to do that. <laughs> oh, to the moon. Footage. <laughs> oh, oh, game over. A little slight injury. It still works so properly. We're going to turn this into this. Oh, check it out, guys. It's all machined out of a solid piece of aluminium. So here we got a stock SEX24 and here we got the modified one. Check out that extra diff clearance look under there. That's better. So next, let's get it on the track of doom and see if we can get round it with zero hands of God. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh yes. Look at that, so far zero hands of God. Can we make the whole track? Oh, look at that. Have the new tires got more grip? And it looks like they have. Next, we have the Bridge of Doom. Can we make it into here with zero hands of God? The last stint. Oh, over Joey, over Joey. Come on. Oh, yes. Zero hands of God. He's definitely... We got a new toy. And this is the world's most realistic nitro radio controlled monster truck. And in this video, we're going to unbox it, have a little look at it, and then take it out for a rip and see if it's any good. Oh my god, guys, check it out. That looks absolutely epic. So just like on a real monster truck, we have two solid axles, front and rear, great big tyres. So 
So we have oil filled, coil over shocks all round, four link suspension, front and rear, with an additional panard rod. Not like a real monster truck. Here we have the 25 size big block engine, three speed transmission, chain drive transfer case, and then just like on a real monster truck, we have a pinion disc brake. Just on the real one, it's there instead of there. They reckon it can do 63 kilometers an hour. Size wise, we're a little bit bigger than a Traxxas Slash, but a little bit smaller than the X Max. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's enough waffle. We are on location, and first we've got to get it running. Run it in fast. It'll be fast. Get on over there. <laughs> oh dear. So, radio on. Car on. Steering, not the fastest, but it's got enough power. Here we go with a front one brake linkage. All right, time to start it. So, first we've got to prime it, so full power, block the exhaustage, give it a few tugs on here. So that should be the fuel in the engine now. So now we can put our glow clippage on there. Hopefully it's going to start. Nitro gang, baby. Oh, 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 God, it is so much fun, but we broke this bit off. So I think we've got to replace that. Hey, you got Mick in the house. You want a bit more power, don't you? Yeah, a bit so more steering. That's what I would suggest to put a NIM battery in there. But more importantly, 1600 milliamp, and we're going to tune it today, aren't we? Yes. It's so high nitro, safer for the engine. Yeah. Because everyone seems to think that lower nitro is safer for the engine. No. No, it's, it's a big myth. So with the 25% nitro, you've got a bigger window. You can run it richer, so it'll save the engine, more lubricant, and you'll still get the burn through because the, the nitro content's high. But, but more importantly, more power. Oh yeah, more power, <laughs> more speed, and that's it, yeah. Ah, oh, that's better. Not more power. Yeah. All right, here we are, back on this location. So David over there, he hates nitros. 
backflip, here we go. <laughs> yes. So good, look at it, perfect. caused it was the little screw on the end of the clutch bell here came loose that made it all loose and that stripped first gear there were rumors floating around online of a new Traxxas Max version 2 and it looks like that it's true because my local hobby shop has just got them into stock so we're gonna head down there now pick one up have an unboxing have a little look at it take it out for a rip and see how good it really is oh man look at that British weather it's cold it's wet it's raining There we are, Red Bean! Yeah. Yeah. Kiwi! <laughs> Look at that, here we are in Red Bean models! What toys have you got for us, Jason? Oh, what you got here, boy? I've uh, got some new, like, belted wheels for the Drayton. Um, I think they fit the Xbox as well. Are they belted? Uh, I think they are, they should yeah, they be. Are, yeah. So that'd be good for speed running, wouldn't it? Oh yeah! Oh, and it comes with adapters. Oh, I like that. And we have a crawler. So what's yeah. the what's the score with this? That's a motor on axle comp crawler. It's a bully two with loads of mods, carbon wheels, twin brushless. But right. what yeah. we've come here for? Ta da! Here <laughs> <laughs> she comes! Here she comes! Here she comes! Oh look at that! Go on, bang it on there. We'll get a quick little montage. Let's crack him open and have a little look inside. We've got big servo, big speed controller, big motor. And big battery tray. Oh, yes. So, so that is a X-Max size battery, isn't it? It's a, it's a huge battery. It only just fits in an X-Max 8 amp ATC. Will it fit inside the Minimax? Oh, one thing I can see. Ooh. We're going to be losing the warranty. I bought on that battery, so that one doesn't fit. We have a solution. Look at all these LiPos he's got in here, man. Four LiPos. All charge ridge, brushless combos, receivers. Oh, what we got here? Is this one for sale or is that a personal? Or? It's a personal one, but... There's always a tag to something, isn't it? Everything's got a price. Yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that. All carbon fibred up. So this is a serpent. Aluminium chassis. See old diff poking out there, look. When are you going to run it? I want to run it ASAP, I'm at a time. Can I video it? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yes. Can Semp have a go? Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's carbon fibre, it should last, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a Oh, 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 it. hit it, hit it. Oh my God. What servo is that? Two Tarba 9373SB. How much are they? Brushless, um, 180. <laughs> You always know when it's a good servo, when you let go and it just keeps doing it the same. Is that full? No, that's not even half. Is that not even half? No. Is he allowed to do full? Yeah, go on, go for it. Yeah. Oh, that's going to go. <laughs> All right, first location. We're going to go for a speed run. Man, it's windy. We haven't got much space. We've got cars coming. It's supposed to do 60 mile an hour, whether it will or not. I'm getting snorted by this bloody door. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody wind! <laughs> now, this guy is, is a new video editor and sometimes helping out with the filming and it's actually my brother and he's got his own YouTube channel as well. Oi oi, the nomadic crowbot. Check it out guys. Holding the old door open for him. Can you tell I'm employed? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a speed meter on there. Meow. 
them up, actually. Oh. All right, next location. All right, new location. Come on, man, ready? Oh, in the face. Guys, we are in the Redfin model storeroom, and Jason has a little present for us. Oh, he's big, isn't it? It's big, that's what she said, that's a two man job up here. I don't know what you look. It's <laughs> 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 <Stem's laughs> man here. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> sit stem. Trash it while it's still in the box. <laughs> Guys, this is the world's biggest radio controlled crawler. Scala, scala, scala. We're gonna take it out for a win! Yes! Oh, it's Christmas every day! Oh my god, guys, check out the size of the box. Let me in, let me in. World's biggest radio controlled crawler. Here we go. Oh, oh dear. That is absolutely mahoosive. Oh my God, guys, this thing is an absolute beast. Just look at the size of it. So this is a normal size crawler, and this is the SEX6. What the hell, man? How can it be so big? Oh look, we've got a little one-hand steering thing. And the steering has plenty of speed and power. Well, enough speed for a crawler anyway. So next, let's get the body on, then take it out for a week. All right, here we go. Time to let it rip. Oh my God, it's heavy. Let's first check out the turning circle. So here we have a two-speed transmission. So this is first gear. Now put it into second gear. That's <laughs> pretty quick for a crawler. Next, let's see how steeply it can crawl. And in my book, to be a crawler, it has to go up 45 degrees. Can it do it? Oh, look at that. Easy. We can go a lot more than that. Oh, that's 52. 55. Oh. Can we make it on top of the bench? Only two four-wheeled crawlers have ever made it up. The modified TRX4 and a little Jeep Banggood special that we got upstairs. So we're at nearly 55 degrees. Can it do it? Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Look how slow we can crawl. That is so controlled. That has got to be one of the most controlled crawlers that I have. Now, let's see if we can make it on top of the table. If it can, it's going to be seriously impressive. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Oh. Tumble, wumble. All right, we've got to go a little bit steeper. Maybe in future modifications, guys, we can modify it so it can get up there. Oh. I don't think it needs much. Guys. We've already got some modifications ordered, so maybe in a future video we're going to modify it and see if we can make it up. Subscribe! I'll tell you what we can try though. The staircase of doom. Not many cars can make it down the staircase of doom. And if this goes wrong, it could be stupidly expensive. So here we go. Will it survive? So far, very controlled. Every step the back end nearly goes. Can we do it? Come on, you can do it. Oh, yes. Look at that, we even got a roll cage in there. Yes, yes. Without portal axles, we've got a TRX4 with portal axles. TRX4 making it over the rough. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. But I'm going to really struggle on because it's too wide. Can we make it through? What? How, How can, can it do that? What? How can it do that? That is impressive. Oh. <laughs> Try the big puddle up there, John. Can we go through that? Yeah. The puddle of doom. Oh no. No, I can't fall in here. It's incredible. How? That is just... How can it do that? How? How? How much do you weigh? 18 stone. So try me? Do it. You've got to do the Kev challenge. Cool.
I want to see if he can tow a car. Rebo is going to go and get his car. Are we going to see if he can tow a car? Is he going to pull it? Is he going to pull it? <laughs> Alright, is it going to do it now? Here we go. Will it do it? Will it do it? Yeah! Oh, he's doing it! <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> Oh, I've had a gear clickage. <laughs> we got a new toy! And in this video, we're going to put a bigger motor into it and turn it into a burnout truck. So we want to be able to rip a burnout with this and smoke these tires up. So number one modification we're going to have to do is fit more power. Perfect. A test, baby. Whoa. Guys, that's going to rip. Here we go! Whoa! Ho, ho. Oh my god! What's it doing to the poor carpet? Oh! Man, it's completely uncontrollable! Here we go, burnout time! Oh no, what, what's happened? Have we killed the ripper motor? Oh no. Oh, that stinks in there. Oh my God, that ripper motor, guys. That is steaming hot. I think we've done it. These tires are not really very smoky. Oh guys, have we finally killed the ripper motor? Hmm. Something's locked up. Oh, oh, we've got smoke. Ripper smoking, look. Oh, game over, Ripper Motor, game over. I'm actually surprised that this stock transmission and all the stock diffs and everything have taken it. And look at that, there's not even any rubber really come off the tyre. All right, let's finish it. That's it, game over. So this is the Armour Vendetta that can do 70 mile an hour. And that is on a three cell LiPo. In this video, we're gonna double it up to a six cell LiPo. So, no idea how fast it's gonna go. 140? Nah. <laughs> so here is a standard ESC, and here we have one that's double the size. A stock dangly, that is. And there, one inch. Yeah. Then we've got six cell LiPos going in. <laughs> You gotta put your controller on. That's it. Did I hear? That's it. Oh! 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 All right, here we are on location. It is pitch black, as you can see, and it's freezing cold, and we got the speed app, and we're gonna turn it on and start it. And Vinny's going to give it a little rip and hopefully not kill it. Is that flat out? Oh, yeah. How? Guys, we have a slight problem. Um, it's going slow. I think the lipos are maybe bad. 48. <laughs> it's another day. It's a little bit warmer, but now it's raining. British weather. Oh, that's going, isn't it? What happened there? Something's wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> All the people steered it. Oh no. Oh, lipo out. Pin it off. Sounds like a 
like it. Oh. Oh my god! Oh! Did you miss <laughs> 64 mile an hour. So we're back, we're back on zero mile an hour. Oh, hurt! You had a boo boo! Show them what you've done. <laughs> boo boo! <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Stop, 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 stop! So rip the uh, spur gear again, I reckon. Oh no, run! Well <laughs> done! <laughs> oh, it only works again! Wonder what happened there? Right, so how fast did it go? Oh, 68 mile an hour again. I'm going to stand next to the lamppost just in case. <laughs> oh, 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 the GPS is off again. <laughs> A good backflip. 67 and backflip at 67. All right, so we're now on attempt like number, God knows, five or six. We're standing where this railing is, so we've got some protection. Vinny's being all man. Whoa, no! That GPS is definitely gone now. That GPS is gone, gone. It's in the grass. It, it bounced off. off here somewhere. It hit the building. It That's gone, isn't it? We're not finding that. The car's all right. There, it's there. Well, there it is. <laughs> so that was 60 mile an hour. Oh, so that crashed all the way over there. It looked like it hit the wall, but it probably didn't. It probably just shot through. That's not sounding too good, mate. Not, is it? <laughs> Should we take it under the light and have a look? Yes. What was it? Spun it, yeah. Oh. Uh, Flashoff's gone. Oh, maybe, no. that's, maybe that's why it's um, <laughs> That's why it handles a bit funny. Yeah. <laughs> Say it. The flout. It's pocket dead, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Anybody want to buy an infraction? Let me bend that off. It's like one careful lady owner. <laughs> oh. oh. Is the motor all right now? Oh, it sounds good. The car's freed up. Yeah. There you go. Send right. your car to Vinny for repair. $570, $85. Guys, we got a dirt cheap new toy. And in this video, we're going to see how it compares to an expensive one. So steering, adequate. All right, let's go. Hey, hey. Minimax steering, also adequate. Oh, my God. So let's start off with a hill climb test. Ah. Oh. Next, oh. the pole. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so one point to the cheapo. So next, staircase of doom! Can it make it down alive? More power! <laughs> yes. Next, the Minimax! Power! Oh my god! Oh. Oh, enough horseplay, let's get out in the real world! Hey. Oh, do I have it there? We have a skate park. But to start off with, we're going to start off on this little BMX track. What are you lot got? Some is an outcast. Yep. Yeah. All right, me back. Show us what you got. Oh my god. What was that? That is just laughing at the mini Mac. Running X01 motor. That's why it's so fast. Oh my god. I want to see if I can clear that. Oh, nice. We slicked it. Oh, look at that X01 motor in there. Footage. Oh, look, backflip. Nailed it. Oh, look, backflip wall. Oh. Next, the Savage is going to attempt to backflip. Can he do it? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh saved it. <laughs> Why is it so fast? I'm not having that. Where's the Mini Max? And the Mini Max at least do one backflip. <laughs> so next, to see what the tornado can do. And then we're going to do a quick speed run. And then we're going to hit the skate park. Here we go, flat out. <laughs> flat out. <laughs> and the speed is an astonishing 14 mile an hour. <laughs> so the zombie apocalypse has been summoned. So now we can hit the skate park. So that was still 14 mile an hour. So now let's get it onto the Mini Max. And then after that, we're going to hit this monstrosity here. Here we go. That's moving. Oh, look at that. 42 mile an hour. It's supposed to do more, but this was on grass. And oh my God. Here we go. Skate park time. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, look 
to that person. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Guys, we got a new toy. And this is the Mercedes AMG GT3 by Kyosha. And something makes it a little bit special. It's nitro and has a two-speed transmission. Come on, now you come. Out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. I don't know. We have a two-speed transmission, tuned pipe, it's four-wheel drive, double wishbone suspension with coilover shocks front and rear, metal chassis, on-road tires, and this beautiful Mercedes body shell. First of all, we've got to attempt to run it in. So let's first prime the engine so you block the exhaust, full throttle, pull the starter a few times. Oh, it's tight. Get the glow on then, hopefully it's gonna start. I haven't got a clue what we're doing, guys. Work. Jesus. Guys, I need Mick Craddock to help me tune it. I have not got a clue what we're doing with nitros. Nitros are fun when they're working right, but if they're not working right, they're a pain in the butt. Come on, Mick, help me, please. We're gonna leave it sitting there for a tank, let it run in, and then we're gonna take it out for a little rip. Location for its first run. We probably shouldn't run it here, but over there we've got a little bit of tarmac. And then later on we'll take it out for a little speed run. Here we have Ark's best driver, and he's got his impraction out. Got a problem in the clutch because it's slipping. What? Yeah. I have absolutely no idea what is wrong with it. When you turn this spur gear by hand, look, it moves the car forward. But when the engine's running, it isn't. So let's take it all apart and have a look to see what's going wrong. I have no idea what I'm looking at, guys. Hello? Can you help me tune it? Nice one. Cheers, mate. Bye. Hey, got Mick in the house. You've really got to learn how to tune these cars, Kev. <laughs> I'd best get on Mick Craddock's RC Masterclass. <laughs> Tuning. <laughs> What's going on in the back here? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a crack in it, it's broken. <laughs> oh, two speeds! So we've got to finish running it in, and then we can tune it up for some speed. Then we can get the body on it and give it a proper rip. No, when nitros are working, they're more fun than electric. I think we've got to get your body on it. <laughs> I lowered the suspension like all the way down. It looked a little bit high out the box, so I made it, I made it low. Nice. Bye guys. Here we are, new location. Is it gonna fire? Mick, Mick, where are you? It's not working. Big as my night try, when it works, brilliant. When it doesn't, then not so brilliant. Anyone look, I think I'm doing something else. <laughs> Here we have a glow plug, and it should be glowing. So you put that on there, that's glowing. So why is it not starting?
Oh, 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 oh. How's that hit? How are we getting? It's alive! It and broke it. Game over. We have a problem with the laminators. Let's have a look. What oh, inside? Broke it. So I think what broke is a diff cup in there. I broke that part before, and this is what happened to it. So I'm guessing that is probably what broke in there. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. Who remembers Sega Rally? If you do, you're probably going to love this. And this is a Toyota GT4 radio controlled drift car. And in this video, we're going to unbox it and give it a rip. Check that out, guys. Look at that, guys. It's almost exactly the same. Just check out the detail of it, guys. And just like on the real Celica, this thing is four-wheel drive. To get inside it, you unclip it here and here, and the lid comes off. So just like on a real rally car, we've got front and rear differentials, suspension all round. So battery-wise, it wants four double A's. Oh, oh. oh. Maybe triple A's. And the controller also wants four triple A's. Hmm. Only joking. <sighs> he doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Bye, right, mate. Bye. Right. So controller on first, then car on. Yes. Uh, what happened? It's a bit slow. It's really slow. Oh. Oh. Okay, thanks. Bye. So apparently it comes in beginner mode. And to put it into pro mode, you're supposed to... I'm not sure. Pull that. Turn it on. And then turn the car on. Oh. Oh. Now it rips. Guys, that actually drifts really well, and it's actually pretty quick. So in the packet, you get some optional gearing so you can play with it and make it accelerate quicker or go more top end. Also, we have some conage. So let's build a little rally track and then see how well this car can drive. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the world's best mini indoor radio controlled rally drift track. So here we have the start line. Can we do? One complete lap on this track 
and make it out alive. So we got to go round there, round there, round there, round the cones, round there, down the straight, over a jump, round the hairpin, and over the finale. Is he going to survive the ramp of doom? Gentlemen, start your engine ready. Steady. Go. go, 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 go. And into the cone section. Checkpoint. Crashing. Round the chicane and coming up the straight onto the first jump. Hurry up, easy right. And round the next hairpin, down the straight and over the suicide jump. Finish! Oh no! Look, and the headlights has come off. What happened? So, have you ever wondered what would happen if you combined an RC car with a snowboard to make the world's longest RC car? In this video, we're going to find out. All right, let's go. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Yeah. Now you attach this end onto there and this end onto here. Who comes out with these silly ideas? So I reckon we bolt that onto there and then that end onto there. And that's going to be perfect. Yes. Here we have a great big extension lead. Here we go, time to see if it works. Here we go, moment of truth. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Alright, let's get the body to fit. So we have the back half and the front half. We just need something to go in between. <laughs> Come on, bend! So next, we've got to make it red, and for that, we've got a professional wrap. Man, car wrapping companies, they charge a fortune. I don't know why, it's not exactly hard, is it? We got it, we got it, here we go. Look at that, guys, practice makes perfect. What do you make of that? Bonkers, mate, bonkers. <laughs> Still coming. It's still coming. <laughs> Why not? Ready for this engineering marvel? I feel it may be lacking a little bit of rigidity. You need a bit of chassis flex, makes it handle better, doesn't it? I'm gonna win the race in. You lot have got no they got no chance. So next we're gonna have a race. Here we have all the contenders. Hopefully the long wheelbase X Max is gonna win. What do you reckon? We've got outcast. Hey, got a new body on the X Max. Got mini Max. Come on, let's do it! Let's go! Everyone's got hangover. It was New Year's Eve last night. First, we're going to have a quick warm-up lap, and then we're going to have a race, and then we're going to hit a skate park and see how high we can jump this thing. Look at that, there we got a standard X-Max. Here we have, I don't even know what it's called. Comment down below what that thing's called. Everyone ready? Yeah. Ready, steady, go, 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 go! Oh no, we're last at the moment. Oh, we're 
The chassis is okay, Kev, but there's been a slight issue with the front end attachment. All right, let's investigate. See what happens. What have you done to it? Oh, I think it flew. That's all right. We got spares. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. You look very professional. <laughs> That's the first time anybody's ever said that. Ready? Back in action and skate park. Yes. So here we are at our local speed run location. So we're gonna do a quick speed run with it. Then we're gonna take it over there and see how well it drifts. And then we're gonna hit the skate park. Let's have a look, let's have a look. What do we get, what do we get, what do we get? Oh, 45. 45 mile an hour. 45 mile an hour. Here we are at our local drift location. I'm impressed by your length. <laughs> oh, there you go, guys. Size matters. Here we are on the skate park. We've got a selection of different ramps. I think we're going to have one hit and it's going to be dead. Flat out from across over there. Throw it across there and straight into that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my God. This is going to go to the moon. If we miss, we're going to hit this. Can't be good, can it? What? How did it take that? It's alive. How? You know what that means? You gotta do it again. <laughs> Is it still going? <laughs> You're aiming for me, weren't you? Might have done. How's it still going? Oh. 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 And I think with that, guys, we're game over. So out of all these RC cars, this one here is one of our favourites. It's fast, it can drift, and it can smoke a set of tyres in seconds. Is. It's big and outside is winter, so we need something for indoors. And I think we have a solution. Oh my god, guys, check that out! I don't know what you're thinking, it's an infraction copy. But well, then the infraction is a copy of Ken Block's Hooney truck. They've even put hoons on the tyres, look. Anyway, we don't care about any of that, we just want to see how good it is. So, just like on infraction, we have rubber tyres. A metal chassis, four-wheel drive, also like the infraction, double wishbone suspension, front and rear, also like the infraction, and the roll cage, also like the infraction. Now the best little indoor car that I've ever used is this, Pro Show Mini Z. It's going to be interesting to see how good this is in comparison. All right, all charged up, and to start with, we're going to rip it on the standard tyres. On the bigger one, we're going to try the standard tyres first, and then the drift tyres. The smaller one doesn't come with any drift tyres, but... I got myself a set of these as recommended by Tom Lee. Oh, look at that! Look at that, we've got roof lights, headlights, splitter lights, tail lights, more tail lights. So steering is epic and power. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that goes pretty good.
problem is most people do not have this smooth surface. So let's put these drift tires on and then it should be able to drift on carpet. Check this out, guys. They're actually made out of proper alloy. Oh my God, how epic does that look? Let's get the rest of them on there. Boom! <laughs> oh my God, that is absolutely amazing. In a minute, we're gonna build a little track in here and have a little drift montage. But first, let's check out the bigger one. I'll tell you what, guys, the little one feels a lot, lot nicer. probably prefer the brushed one. The brushless one is a little bit coggy. What coggy means, it stutters a little bit when you get going. But as cool as this one is, I would definitely prefer the smaller one. Boom. Here we have the track. Masterpiece. So next, we're gonna have a little drift race. We have another driver just turned up. Bad one. So I'm gonna start off with this one. I'm gonna start off with this one. Drift race, ready, <laughs> ready, go. So the verdict is, this one is definitely so much easier to drive. It's more controllable. This one seems quite tricky. Once you've got a tight obstacle track, I think it's gonna need a little bit more practice. But for the price, I think this one's about 70 pounds or dollars. This one's about 200. So which one would you choose? The Mini Z, all day long. Yeah? I mean, I like this because it's got LiPo battery. Yeah, I think it almost yeah. looks cooler. Oh no, what happened? Oh dear. Oh, infraction. Yep. Hey. So here we are on our next location, and I think this one here is probably more suited really for outdoors. All right, let it rip. Oh, we've got a big one. All right, let's give it a little bit more EVC, or whatever it's called. EPA, what's it called? EPA. I should make it easier to do. Man, we gotta stop having all these discos in here. Check this out, we've got some new cameras. So guys, you're gonna see some funny, special, funky effects in this video, and you're probably gonna be wondering, how the hell did you get these shots? Well, it's with these cameras here. All right, that's enough waffle, let's go play. Here we are on location, we got Vinny and Dave in the house with their toys. A bit naughty. Vinny's got the Delta Plastics Jaguar body shell. <laughs> I think we're not too bad. A little bit there. Sorry, Sniffy.
the camera. I hope I ain't killed the lens. Oh, one oh. okay, but the oh. Down. Oh, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, look. Literally the first corner. The lens has got it. Oh, and the body got it as well. Yeah. There. Oh, what? There. All down there. Oh. What happened? You killed it. I can't believe I killed it the first time I turned it on. What are you doing, Vinny? You can have a little go of polishing it for you, mate. Well, it's better than it was. Let's put it back on and see what the footage looks like. Here's a challenge, you've got to drift it around one of the wheels. Oh, nearly done it. Billy drift under the tire. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, battery's gone flat. We're going to attempt to make this the world's best radio controlled mini rock crawler. Which we got this heavy duty brushless motor combo from Fury Tech. And we're also going to give it a rear wheel steering conversion. I'm still waiting for those parts, but they should turn up in a minute, hopefully, once the postman comes. But for now, let's crack on, stop waffling, and get the speed controller in and the motor. Oh, guys, check that out we've got outrunner brushless motor and an upgraded all metal transmission and to power it we have this brushless speed controller so now let's get it in there here we go let's see how well it can crawl and in a minute we're going to build a proper crawler track and properly test it out but first i want to get the rear steer on there the parts still haven't turned up but they're going to turn up in this video Anyway, look how slow we can go. It's the slowest. What? And then full speed. Man, that is going to be epic for crawling. That feels so controlled. How can it go so slow? That has got to be one of the most controlled crawlers that I've ever had. That's amazing. More power. Boom! It's another day. Postman's come and we now have all the parts to do the rear steer conversion on here. So we've got a stock axial housing, let's got all the gubbins in there, and then we got all the trill aluminium upgrades to turn it into another axle like that. Boom, there we go, got it all fitted. Here we are in Redfin Models, and here we have the world's best mini crawler track. And Jason has some <laughs> other toys that we can compare with. So we've got one modified one. This is the stock version of that. And what else you got, mate? Uh, we've got a mini Outback 3, and we've got an RC4 drive mini Gelandi. So this thing here, that's all metalled up under there. Isn't that She's ready. And that one is, oh, it's just that. What one's going to win? It's got to be that one, isn't it? Be a bit embarrassing if it don't. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> all right, here we have all the contenders. Right, what's everyone got? This is me. That one is the official Logic rep. Okay. Sam's got the FTX Outback. And this is Jason's one, isn't it? Yeah, Gelandi RC4 drive. And where can they borrow this stuff from if anyone wants uh, one? A refin? Well, there you go. There you go. Hold on, we want to put Jason up front, don't we? Because Jason knows the route, the hard route. Oh. A lot of cars actually struggle on this bit, didn't they? Oh, he's already struggling. I'm gonna... Right, here goes Stem. Oh, are we oh, done? No. Tumble Wumble. <laughs> All right, he needs a hand of God. Hand of God for the Stem. Next, we have the stock one. What? What's happening here? <laughs> oh, straight up. 
Ah, oh, look at that, easy. Get around so we're going to go for the difficult route, which is up this piece. Ooh. Is that your route, that one, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 look at the angle. <laughs> Tumble Wumble. Alright, Steph, he's got no eye, because he... Oh, there he goes. Pete! Oh, 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 no! Tumble Wumble. Try again. Yeah, go, I know that. You can do it. Yeah. What car? Uh, any. Try this one. Try this one. Oh, no. Oh, now we've got the professional having a go. Oh, look at that! Try the next one. Move that, you've got wrist here. Now that is cool. Do you approve? Yes. You just need to watch which way. You're gonna get spot. Oh look at that! Is he gonna do it? Oh look at that! Oh, I reckon we should give Scarlett the best one. <laughs> oh, she you done it? She knows more power. Can she do it? Can she make it up the bridge of doom? Oh oh! oh. <laughs> look at that! It's made it. Oh, we're struggling. Come on, you can do it. Oh yes, we found grip. I wonder if it's gonna make it up the steeper side. All right, rear steer. Here we go. Is it gonna be able to make it up the steeper side? Oh no. Oh, 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 can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Come on, come on. All right, we'll get back to that in a minute. We will do it. Look at that, with that rear steering, that really helps it get round. Look at that articulation. And now we have an even bigger articulation test. Oh, look at that suspension flex. And straight over. And now over the finale, can it do it? We've got the rear steer kicked in. And look at that, straight over. <laughs> All right, I've got it in my head. We've got to make it over this. And we have a little trick. Here, we have brake cleaner. And if we clean the tires, we should hopefully be able to find a little bit of extra grip. It's probably a bad idea to do that too much because rubber does come off. Right, here we go. Can it make the hill climb of doom? Oh, we did it, we did it, we did it. Yes. <laughs> Guys, this is the Traxxas Max version two. And in this video, we're gonna give it more power. Double the power. So usually the Max will run on one 4S LiPo, but we're gonna double it up to 8S. And to do that, we're gonna fit this, the Hobby Wing Max 6. More power! So here we have the stock speed controller. This one here can take 4S LiPo, and I think it went faulty. In the last video, it kept cutting out. So hopefully this is gonna be a nice upgrade. Boom! There we go, all installed. It fitted in there perfectly. So first, let's start off with a 4S LiPo, and then we're gonna double it up to an 8S LiPo, which would give it double the power. Oh, that's more power than before. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, that's on 4S. Let's try it on 8S. Not really sure how we're gonna fit 8S in there. Here goes nothing. A test, baby! A test! Here we go, guys! Are you ready? This is going to be scary. No, no, that's bad. What's happened? It blew the tire straight off the rim. What? So let's fix it, and then we're gonna take it out for a rip. We are on location. First of all, we're gonna do a quick speed run. Oh, that's the end of it. 
Well, that was 45 mile an hour. 46. It's actually supposed to do 60 mile an hour. No idea how it's ever going to do 60 on these tyres. Come on, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh no! Oh, get the tyre off. What? They blew two tyres off. What? Get it fixed and we'll let it rip again. So we got the tyres glued on again. And we are on the next location. Hey, got cameraman. This is our new editor, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the comments if he's doing good. <laughs> so now we're running it on 6S LiPo. The 8S was way too much for it, and this is probably still going to be too much. Everybody ready? Ready? <laughs> what is all that racket going on over there? What's all that racket? <laughs> Let's get it now. Here we go to the moon. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gone. Game over. We got a new toy. So let's unbox it and then take it out for a little whip. Oh, look how cute it is. Size wise, here it is compared to the Traxxas UDR. And here it's compared to its bigger brother. What I really love about these cars is the realism. They've got solid live rear axles, just like on the real thing. We have coilover shocks, double wishbone suspension up front. Detailed bodywork and all round. So much fun. So is the small one going to be all noise and no action? Or is it going to be absolutely epic? In this video, we're going to find out. On the box it says it can do 45 mile an hour and we have a GPS so we can check it. So steering. Yeah, it's all right. Power. Oh, 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 oh. Guys, that's going to go. All right, enough waffle. Let's go let it rip. We are on location. First of all, we're going to do a speed run. All right, there we go. Got the GPS on there. Zero it off. Oh, look at that, bang on. 45 mile an hour. Here we are, on location. So we got to see if it is actually the king. Here we are, next location. We got the crew in the house. What's all that noise? That one's more manly. Well, that one's got king written on it. Ah! Ready? Ready? Go! Oh, well, yeah, one's got my Look at all that noise down there. What's going on? Oh, no, look. 
It says king on it. Why did it happen? King is dead. Oh. So next we can have a race. We have the Centurn, which is the same size. We've got a Mini Max. Dan's got an FTX, what? Zorro. Zorro. So he's probably not going to be able to get it running. Kev's jinxed me already. <laughs> <laughs> Nitro gang, baby. Come on, Dan, I'm running out of film here. That's <laughs> because you keep waffling. <laughs> hey. We have an other contender. This is a SCX6. He's got a whole load of goodies under there. You have to do my one soon. Got a C10 body on an X Max. I'm gonna have to get one. All right, we're gonna race to the grass and then back. Ready, steady, go, 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 go! We're in the lead. We're in the lead. Oh, look at that! Oh, Mini Max. Turn round. Turn round. Oh, the X Max. Come on, can we get the X Max? Oh yes, we got it. We take the win. Oh. <laughs> the king takes the win. What do you reckon? King life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh look, can we make it up this monstrosity? Oh look at that, easy! So it's been going all day long, took all the abuse through it, took the skate park, took everything else, I think. It definitely deserves a bad. Got a new toy! And you're probably thinking, why? I've got enough toys already! And I have! But one more's not gonna harm. And this has got its purpose. So a buggy, probably one of the fastest off-road RC cars, but they're not really that good over rough terrain. They get stuck and they get caught, especially somewhere like Arc Raceway. So then this, the Creighton, like a monster truggy type thing, it's a little bit clumsy. So this sits right in the middle. So this is a truggy. Buggy. Monstery truggy. So we have double wishbone suspension, front and rear, coilover shock, belted tyres, not supple, a powerful 6S brushless system. That means lots of speed. Hopefully. And it says it can do 70 mile an hour. And we have a GPS so we can check it. And to get the 70 mile an hour, you're supposed to fit the high speed gearing. <laughs> that, that size difference. So the bigger a pinion gear that you fit, the faster the wheels are going to spin, the faster the car is going to go. <laughs> so steering, plenty of speed and power from the Spectrum Servo. I can feel it, that's gonna go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! Poor carpets! And poor diffs. Staircase of doom. Oh, oh no! It says on the box, extreme bash proof. That means we gotta test it, and in this video, we will. It says on the box, 7075 T6 chassis. If that's true, it's gonna be insanely strong and almost impossible to bend. In this video, we're gonna find out. We are on location. First of all, we're gonna do a quick speed run, but someone again is evading our space look. Are they gone? Are they gone? Oh, yes. And running an RC car is a lot more important than someone learning how to drive. Well, we're learning how to drive too. <laughs> Success, baby. Oh, 68. <laughs> Skate park next. <laughs> oh, is it going to be 
zombies? Is it going to be any zombies? No zombies! Yes! Right, we are on location! <laughs> Most of our ones are grey. Alright, let's start giving it some action and seeing how strong this thing really is. It says the XB on there. Oh, it's still going. Guys, this thing is taking abuse. I like the shrugginess, I like the smaller wheels of the monster truck. Look at that! Oh my god! Uh oh! <laughs> Footage. The viewers are impressed. Was that impressive? <laughs> they approve. <laughs> oh. Jesus! <laughs> I quit. <laughs> you quit? I quit. No. Right, so the cameraman's got the hump at the moment, but anyway. So this skate park has also got a suicide jump. Take a run up through there, flat out, and up that. And sometimes it goes to the top of that tree. Bit, bit dirty there, bro. Right, this is going to go to the moon, guys. Here we go. Jesus, look at that go. <laughs> I have another challenge, and not many RC cars can do it. And if it goes wrong, it's going to be mass carnage. So you've got to get a little run up from there, hit that, and we've got to try and clear the whole lot. If it goes wrong, we're going to hit Pikachu. Is that Pikachu? The one on the left of Pikachu. Let's see if Pikachu gets to survive. Oh, easy! Easy! <laughs> so, so far, the chassis does look straight still. Everything else looks good. Oh, batteries have come out. That's bad. Everything else so far is looking good. Here we are. Next location. We got eight S Steve in the house. We got four S Mitchell in the house. Oh, good thing with these tires being belted, they don't expand too much. Watch. Oh, no, to do it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I hate my dry bits. I've actually dried it. <laughs> All right, let's try again so we get back to out of it. Oh. Only just. We're going <laughs> to take a run up from there, hit this. The aim is to clear that. But it might go wrong. It might go in there. It might go in there. It might land on someone's head. Are you ready? <laughs> Oh, what a landing. Hold on, look. Hold on. We've got dual rates, so now we should have more power. And we should have more brakes. Right, look. That was only half power. Now watch. Oh, I've broken it up now. Let's do it again. Right, you ready? It's up, bitch. Uh oh. Oh, ho, ho, Where did that land? It went behind the, well, the grind box, put that in the fence, on the floor, and bounced. Oh, but we got it. All right, backflip time. Oh, easy. It's only because it was on half power. That's why. Now I've broken it up. Oh, <laughs> man, it's taking a beating. Yeah. I really want to take a run up flat out and hit that. It may well go on the roof. Oh, there goes Stephen. Right, we go a bit more. Oh, oh, that's it. Oh, no. Let's have a little look inside. See how the general condition is of the Armour Italian EXP. Well, I think. Oh, this thing is wobbling around. What is that? Uh, that would be a spare bit for a fan that plugs into there and that runs to see if you put a fan on there. Oh. Found a little bit of bendage. We bent the rear shock tower, look. So I think we're going to need a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. That is why we was clicking. Oh, hello. When you're supposed to see <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Christmas every day. 
check it out guys, it's Nitro and it's got a two speed transmission. It's four wheel drive. And there we have the Nitro engine, and it's of the Force variety. Force engines are actually really good if you know how to tune them. I can't tune. Here you can see the two-speed transmission. Next, let's get some Nitro in there and get it running. On location, we got a skate park over there. We got AS and son of AS in the house. Forest. So we got AS yeah. Steve and we got Forest Mitch. <laughs> He's got his X Max. You got any more modifications on this since last time? Uh, no, I just got bigger batteries. Look at that. We got a C10. Oh, and he's got the Beetle yeah. and a Rustler. Uh, no, that is. That's Speed Passion RS2. Isn't it? And what has Mitchell got? Skateboard. He's a ramper. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? People bring a skateboard to a skate park. <laughs> GPS on there, see how fast it can go. What do you reckon? How fast? 42. What do you reckon? 35. I'm gonna go with 41. <laughs> Alright, here we go, speed one. <laughs> Guys, it doesn't sound right, but I've got no idea. Is it rich? Is it lean? Who knows? That's going better, that's richer. Must still be lean. Um, we need to learn how to tune. I thought I tuned it the other car. Well, how can that be? Oh, you're kidding me. Hey! Thanks for bringing your zombie. That's all right, that's not a problem. Let's see. I think Steven should have a go at tuning. Alright, we'll tank it up. Then AS is gonna give it an attempt of tuning it. We're gonna see what speed we've done. And then we're gonna hit the skate park and see how good it is. What speed did we get? 38. Oh, so who's the closest? I said 41. Steve said 42. You said 35. Yeah. Are we even? Yeah. Oh, oh. AS is gonna give it a go at tuning it. Uh, oh, I'd say it sounds lean. Yeah. That's a bit more lively. Does it hold the engine? Oh! It's dying. Oh no, oh, it's just spitting out gears. <laughs> you know what I used to do is spit on the glow plug, but obviously it's not my car. Right? <laughs> Oh look, we broke the body post, engines moved again, and we bent the chassis. Didn't we do well? <laughs> Game over. <laughs> Guys, we got another toy. It's a ripsaw tank top thing, and what is this? And this. In this video, we're going to find out. Check it out, guys. So it's got rubber tracks, it's got suspension, and a butt. And it does something, so in a minute we're going to find out what. Here we go at the world's best tank obstacle course. So we're going to go over all that lot. And then we're going to take it out in the real world and see what this thing can actually do. And then we've still got to figure out what this stink button does. It's probably something to do with a butt. Here we go. Oh, I can't over. <laughs> What's going on here? 
Can he make it up? Oh, it's not a hill climber. What about backwards? Run up. <laughs> All right, let's see what the stink spray button does. Oh, look. <laughs> so that must be what this is for. It's one of those gadgets what we had on that little robot car. So we get some water in here. And then we've got to find where you put it. Uh, where's he go? All right, useful instructions. Ah! Here we go, stink time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys, it's quite weird, actually, because it looks like steam, but it's actually freezing cold, so no idea how it works. Guys, we got a new toy and it's so big, it comes in two boxes. Oh my God, check out the size of that. What? It's bigger than my head. And here it is next to an X-Max wheel. Guys, oh my God. Check that out. Guys, look at that. Does anybody recognize that body? What do you reckon, guys? Here we, Stimpy. Here we go here. <laughs> Look at that. We even get chocolates. Massive thank you to Dan from Primal RC. By the way, guys, if you want to know where you can get one of these from, all the techno babble, I'm going to put a link to the Primal website down below. Come on, Stimp, lift him out. Oh, give me the heavy job, eh? Oh, what is this? Electric brushless conversion kit. Brushless. Free. Brushless conversion kit. You guys in the comments have been saying you want to see an electric laminator. So that brushless kit. It's going to go into that laminator there. Uh, what are these? Oh, that's the upgrade for another laminator. That's long wheelbase conversion. Oh, look, we've got another laminator. That one's in another video. That one there is going to get the ATCC Taylor engine. Come on, muscle man. Yeah, look, there's the wheels. Yep. Oh, I noticed they're the smaller wheels, thinner. Yeah, because this one is a mega truck, not a monster truck. Guys, look at that body. We've got stickers somewhere to put on it. We've got the option of two different grills. These are the new shock absorbers and check out the size of that shaft. So that one down there is the original Raminator. And this one here is actually the monster truck version. This one here is the mud truck version. Same truck pretty much. So the red one, the original shock. Here's the new shock and check out that thickness of that shaft. Also on that one, when you compress the shock all the way, the piston would bottom out at the top of the shock, leaving a little bit of shock shaft exposed. And the trouble is with that, when you bottom out the truck, it puts all that load on that shaft and it can bend it inside. On these new shocks, look, they actually bottom out on the bottom. So now when you bottom it out, you're not putting all that load on the shaft. So hopefully these are not going to bend. So looking underneath, here we've got the brake servo, the engine, reverse servo and throttle servo. So next we've got to fit the axles, then we can fit the wheels and then we can take it out and rip it. One's on, boom. And next, let's get the tyres on. Boom. Oh guys, check it out. How epic does that look? It looks just like the big monster truck. Because that one's going to be red and that one's getting monster truck tyres. It's the same as the chassis of the Raminator. That body is going to fit on there. And soon, I'm hoping, we're going to be able to get clear bodies so I can paint it red. Because that's the colour that that's going to go. And then we can put this body onto a Raminator and have a Raminator RC car that looks the same as my full-size monster truck. So here you can see the size of it compared to the original Raminator. So it's exactly the same size, but this one's got mud truck tyres. Let me know in the comments what body you like, but I'm really a fan of these classic looking bodies. Just check that out, guys. So I've already put the two stroke oil in this. So put a little bit in there and we should be good to go. So under here, we have a priming button. Pump that a few times so we get fuel in there and then it should hopefully fire up. But 
got to run it in first, so we're going to do that for a couple of tanks, or maybe a quarter of a tank, and then we'll start tuning it. <laughs> Straight away. Oh. Finish, go. Ooh, ready to <laughs> oh. oh, it's Christmas every day. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Guys, we got toys. We have got toys. Check it all out. We have a Kyosho Mini Z buggy, a Mini Z brushless chassis, yeah, one of them, some spare parts, look at that. We have an Inferno MP10 Nitro Racers kit, but we're not going to race it, we're going to bash it. We've got Pico engine, Pico pipe, and look at this, it's a Kyosho Alpine. It's Nitro, two-speed transmission, so video on all of this stuff soon. <laughs> I'm doing my bit. I'm doing my bit, look. This one's just a little ruminator. I don't think two would fit in there, you know. Put a little one in. <laughs> this is really a big RC car, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's really heavy. Yeah, it's 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 heavy. Look at that, Tom's got the professional setup. We've got to go old school. Old school, spin it everywhere. <laughs> look, look, look. He's a noisy boy. <laughs> Obnoxious. <laughs> All right, see if this one will go. Hey! Running it in, so it's going to get faster. That is noisy. Right. Two, one. Go. Oh, the smoke! I got So next, here we have, it's a log, but we can use it as a jump. Look at the size of it, that is massive. And that's our takeoff zone. And it's stalled. And off. Here we go. Of it, and that is from there. Look, plus it went up, plus it's like boom. <laughs> you wait, guys, till we run the one with the bigger engine. Look at that, no damage at all.
Yeah. What do you make of that? Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> again and we're not sure why there's no way that we're carrying it back to the land driver so we're gonna drive it down here i think we must have got it wet it must have soaked something all right let's get andy cleaned up and oh my god what an epic truck <laughs> guys we got a new toy it's nitro and has a two-speed transmission we got four-wheel drive in a minute we're gonna take it out for a rip but first just check out this beautiful body here we are on location and oh look mitchell has bought a what is it Joshua Phaser Mark II. Are we can have a little race in a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it's brushed. He's not brushless. Yeah, it's all completely stopped. So I think what's going to happen is he's going to get whooped. Probably. <laughs> get your one ready. I'll get my running. We'll have a race. <laughs> all right, we are doing one lap at the roundabout. We're going to bring it out again a bit later when the sun comes up. All right, there we go. Electric brushed versus nitro two speed. Ready, ready, go. <laughs> So it's another day, the sun's come out, we're going to take the nitro out again, but we need to get some more nitro. So let's head over to our local hobby shop, Redfin Models, and tank it up. Private parking. Is it? Yeah. Have they got their own spot? Well, it's only 60 quid if you get caught. Can <laughs> <laughs> you get clapped? No, they're not going to get clamped down these tyres, are they? <laughs> <laughs> it says loading only, we're loading nitro. Here we are at Redfin Models. What new toys has Jason got in the shop? So here we are in the Redfin Dungeon. What you got for us, Jason? We've got a Bruiser. A little Tammy one with a metal chassis and three speed and whatnot. And a G made GOM with an axe system in it and nice server and whatnot. It's gone? Yeah, yeah, been and gone. It's gone now. Oh, yeah. See ya. <laughs> What's he doing? He's up and then they're going to go for sale. I'll show you, I'll show you. Um, they're kind of top secret. Uh oh, but, um, uh -oh. can the viewers see? I that's my Zoom, which is a very rare one. Release. It's a re release, but um, yeah. as soon as they um, as soon as they run out, they've got a bit collectible quite quickly. Yeah. yeah. I've got a lesson. Is it for sale? Yeah. So What's that Avanti there? And that's an original 1988 Avanti. Oh, that was my dream car when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to look at the catalogues. Yeah. Oh, and this and too. this and the Egress. Yeah. This and the Egress was like the one, wasn't it? Oh, check that out. It looks so cute. A quick flippage of what's in there, bring back some memories. Where's all the buggies? Ah, that's Chris's fun, the grasshopper. I think that's awesome. So, all wheel drive. So, these wheel bases, can you change that between cars? Yeah. All right, we'll take, yeah. we'll take that one then. Nitro, nitro. Oh, look at that. Look at all that. Lovely, jubbly. You've got a nitro, so now we can go with no ticket. <laughs> I 
Drive RC. God, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't crash it. It's a nice body. You got to do bad for first go. Aye. What have you done? <laughs> oh, give me that back. <laughs> Guys, in these two boxes, we have the world's biggest RC car, and we're going to fit the biggest and most powerful engine that we can find, and that is a Taylor RC. 80cc engine. Check it out. Some other upgrades. We've got a rear steering axle. Check out the size of it. This is a Traxxas Slash. And this is the axle for the Raminator. We've got long wheel base conversion kit, alloy body post, the world's most powerful servos, 130 kilos. We also have a brushless conversion kit that is going to go into that Raminator. But this one here is the version 2. The new one is the version 3. And this one here is the mud truck version. Oh, it's Christmas every day. <laughs> Here we've got the front axle. This one's the rear axle, but we don't need it because we've got another front axle that we're putting on the back. Check out the size of these tires, guys. Whoops. I still can't get over the size of these guys. Here we have my head. Here we have Raminator tire. Look at it, footage size. She so got disc brake assembly and caliper. So the new version of 3 does come with 100 kg servos. Are we going to put in the Primal 130 kilo servos? Check it out, guys. That is just a work of art. All metal geared, all metal case. Same as the axles, guys. Fully metal gears, fully metal construction. <laughs> Oh, look at that, guys. Check out that beautiful black body. So here we can see the engine, stainless steel pipe, fuel tank. Now I've got to do the same on all the other ones. I'm not going to bother filming it. There we go, longer links on. Next, we have the shocks. Oh, check it out, guys. Man, I reckon that looks epic with that longer wheelbase. Here's the standard wheelbase, and those extra two inches make all the difference. Oh, check it out, guys. What do you reckon with it with a classic body on there? Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Please, please, please. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. That must be the converter plate so we can mount it. Filter. Yes, this is the engine, guys. This is the engine. Oh, look at that, guys. <laughs> That's the exhaust. Oh, my God, look at it. Now we've got to figure out how we put that into there. And if you head over to the Taylor RC website, they've got some downloads so you can download and print the engine running instructions. Mission out. Oh, yes, we're loose. We're loose. Come on, out you come. Come on, out you come. Man, what's going on here? Come off. So, there, I think it's going to be easier just to take out the whole transmission. Come on, why is it battling me? Come on, got to come out now, surely. Come out. What is holding this thing in? Oh, damn you! Right, now this bit has got to come off of here somehow. So that's maybe going to make it difficult, I don't know. Oh no, guys, look at that, it's coming in. This is too easy now. Oh, look at that, guys. That's going to have some power.
It is running day, and Vinny is preparing something. What are you doing, mate? Putting your shell, your old shell, on a cage. This is the original body that came off a lap laminator. It's already a bit slaughtered. Because that engine's going to do loads of wheelies, probably, it's going to get the back of the shells. You might as well keep this one as a shelf queen. That's what people said in the comments on my second channel. Keep that as a shelf queen and keep that as a basher one. You have the expert. Yeah. I would say expert. So for every litre of petrol or gasoline for the Americans, we need 10 millilitres of this stuff here and 40 millilitres of this stuff there. That's if you worked it out right. Oh, that is rubbish. So that's going to leak now, isn't it? Right. Don't put too much in here. Oh my god! Oh no, just kidding. Don't you? Oh, he's overfilled it. <laughs> oh no, he's making a mess. Yeah, I told you, your jerry can's rubbish. What? I'm taking that back. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That leaks. Oh, come on! Why is everything leaking? It's not every single jerry can leaks. This leaks. Can anyone leave a comment down below? We need some fuel containers that don't leak. The jerry can leaks. These stupid thing leaks, everything leaks. Everything and then we're going to get to where we're going, the whole Land Rover is going to be fumed out and we're going to probably pass out. I mean, what? I mean, really? Well, how, how can everything leak? Right, we're outside now to stop the place from stinking. 10 millilitres of that per litre. That looks beautiful. Is it? You sure? Yeah. There we go, get that octane in there, mate. So nice body off, oh. old body off. Here we are on our first location. We're going to see if it works. And then we're going to take it over to Arc Raceway and have a little whip around there. But we're going to run this engine in properly, so we're not going to bother filming the whole process. We're just going to do it and then we'll, we'll let it rip. Oh, look at it. <laughs> We're coming down there. Is it? Yeah, what a crap bottle. We'll change the angle of the bottle. What a. Whoa, that comes oh. We'll be stinking in the van now. Oh, man. Is that oh, it's literally gone everywhere. That's all you've done this morning is moan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be all right. All right, so next. Radio on. Plug him in, Vinny. Plug him in. in. I, I've only got one hand. Oh. So red light on means engine can start. First, we've got a, what, a choke on, is it? Don't accelerate. Oh, look, you see the fuel go in. Oh my god, guys, that exhaust is so loud. It's not coming through on camera, but it's deafening. Are you happy, boy? That's so fast, isn't it? That, 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 that was worth all the best. <laughs> It's a beast. That's a beauty. The steering, the, the power, all of it. We're happy, but they're not. They're not happy at all. <laughs> Someone just gave me a little sign out the window. Did they really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think we should go to Ark. I think we should. Let's do it. Let's go. Here we are, on location. Oh look, we've got some crew over there. Hey, got a boss in the house. <laughs> Get him going. Give that a little tug like you do your schmeckle. Ready? <laughs> Where'd he go? First hole? I don't know. Oh. Do you have to do a choke again, do you reckon, or not? Got the engine tuning expert in the house. Oh, no. Right, next hole.
running in guys the engine's still running rich once we tune it up and it's fully running in this thing is going to get a lot lot faster So in the last video, we got the engine fitted, but we could not get it running because we're still waiting on some parts. The transmission is supposed to go in here, but we haven't got any nuts and bolts. We need the bolts to fit on the flywheel. We need bolts to fit the gearbox on, and we also need bolts for the torque converter. And then we need a MSD control unit to sort of control the engine. I've got all that stuff on order. No idea when it's gonna turn up, but we do still have a few little jobs that we gotta do to the truck. Well, in here is what I am worried about the most. This here is the wiring harness now it's already pre-made most of it it should hopefully not be that bad but i am absolutely useless when it comes to this sort of stuff and looking at all this absolutely terrifies me a few of you guys have said kev how do i know how to build a monster truck well i don't i'm kind of winging it i've got no idea what i'm doing uh i'm just kind of making it up as we're going along waffle 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 when we went to las vegas i took my camera and i took loads of pictures so this guys is everything that i've got to go by i've took pictures from all the different angles if i don't know where something goes I'll just go through these pictures and hopefully one of them is going to show me where it goes. Also, Tony from Swamp Thing 4x4, he's got a UK monster truck. He's been down a couple of times to give me some pointers and he's always on the other end of the phone uh, to offer advice and stuff like that. Also, Mikey from V2 Vids, he's got a monster truck over in America and he's given me some pointers too. Also, big shout out to Peter from the 4 Monster Truck for giving me some advice too, especially about the wheels and stuff. Enough waffle, let's get wrenching. So we've just joined two clamps together just to make the whole thing a little bit more secure. We're holding on to this thing for dear life. We don't want it moving about. So there we go. We've got this piece all welded up so we can bolt this now onto the roll cage. So here we've got the rear steer switch. That slots into there. I think it just wedges in, I think. And then you've got your rear steer like that. And then we've got this other switch that we have to put into here. And this one is so you can turn off the self-center. With it one way, the steering will automatically self-center. When you flick it the other way, it will stay wherever you leave the steering. We've still got to get all this lot powder coated, but for now, we just want to assemble it all, make sure that everything works. So we'll take everything off, get it all powder coated, and then put it all back together again. That is solid. That is not going anywhere. Next, we've got to mount the shifter. <laughs> So we've just tacked it on for now. We're going to put it on first, see how it all fits. And then later on, when we're happy, then we're going to weld it up fully. So now we've got to get this shifter in position and we've got to get it in just the right place. So I've taken the shifter back out again. We've got it all tacked up for now. We're not going to fully weld it just yet, just in case we've got to move. We've got the shifter in. Next, we've got to finish off mounting off this steering column. We've got to make a little bracket that bolts on in here. We're going to put a bolt through here to stop it from distorting. I've also bolted these two together. We ground a little flat on here, just so it sits on that tube nicely. We've got a little bit more stuff to weld to. Man, I love TIG welding. There's no sparks, there's no spatter. You can make it all nice and flush. There we go, we actually made two of them. If you know why, let me know in the comments. 
So next, I'm gonna mount these switches here. So we got engine start, we got ignition, we got fuel pumps, even though we've got mechanical pumps, so I don't think we need them. Cooling, lamps, so we can have headlights on there, I guess. So I've been looking at loads of pictures all over the internet, and I think I'm gonna do it a little bit like this grave digger here. So I made this piece of angle to put onto the box here, and then we can weld it onto those clamps there. So I wanna put the gauges up on top here. Here we've got all these little pod things that hold these gauges into place and we can get four of them along here. Next, we need some nuts and bolts and I ordered them on eBay. Oh, we have posts. We have nuts and voltage. We got one more, and this one's a big one. So next we've got to figure out where to mount it. I'm thinking probably there, I'm guessing. Basically you want it somewhere where you're not gonna block any vision anywhere. We want to be able to see out through the floor and out the window. So I think my eye level's about here. Look at the state of that, guys. That thing is mahoosive. No idea we can fit it in here once we get the other side on as well. Oh, guys, just look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> look at that in there, guys. That hub is fitting inside that wheel perfectly now. So now we've got to take all the wheels back off again, get it all in again, and the next time we're going to put the big tyres on is, I suppose, when it's finished. <laughs> you ain't gonna be on top like that. Oh, you've done it! <laughs> <laughs> you want to go? You do, really. So next, I've got to make a bigger brake pedal. When we're bouncing around in here, it's easy to miss the pedal. So I'm gonna put that on there. So next, we've got to figure out how to plumb it up. So I've got all these fittings here, all these AN fittings. And I've got to figure out which fitting goes onto which component. And here we've got some smaller ones. And then these can go on here on the oil coolers for the transmission. A bigger one here, number 12 for the cooling. I've got to take all these off again to actually make the lines later on. But for now, I'm just going to put all the fittings on everywhere so I know what we've got, so I know what we need, and then we can take them off again and make up all the lines. I've got to figure out what all these threads are in here for the water pump. No idea what that is, probably BSP, I don't know. And then I've got to figure out somehow where it all goes. So looking at pictures, I think it comes out of here and then goes into the bottom of the water pump. And then out of here, I think we need a T piece or a Y piece. And then it goes somewhere, and I don't know where. So I've just made up my first hose here for the oil coolers for the transmission. So next, I'm gonna have a go at making up a water hose to go from the radiator to the water pump. So we've got to wind that all the way on there until you can see that rubber hose meet that shoulder. It's tight, but it's getting there. 
There we go, just like that. And I've got these special jaws for the vise so I can hold the hose and the fittings. And I've got all these special spanners here so that you don't scratch the fittings. Next, we've got to put a little bit of lube on here to help it go on. Now you can get proper lube apparently, but I haven't got any and apparently WD-40 does the same or free my oil. We're gonna put a little bit of tape on here because we wanna make sure when we run the other fitting in there that it doesn't all come off. And you can see it here, if it does come off, we'll see. There we go, it hasn't moved. Then just so that we know where to cut the hose, I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape on there just to mark it, then we know that that is where we cut it. Now to cut the hose, I'm gonna use these cutters here. I know a lot of people, they use an angle grinder, but the trouble is with that, you can end up getting all the dust inside the line. And you can blow it out, but I just like the idea of that. Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Beautiful. Boom. So I've just folded up this piece of metal here, a couple of notches in there, a few holes on there. So next we can bolt that on top of here like this. And then we can weld a couple of things on there. Taco can go on there. This is the RII. When you get into trouble, then they can shut you down. Beautiful. So I want to mount it here somewhere. So I've got a couple of clamps like that. We're going to fit one on there. One's already on there. Yeah, I think something like that's going to be pretty good. <laughs> what are you filming? <laughs> I just got a bit of that chin air. What's he laughing at? I'm laughing at that chin here, man. <laughs> Get him in there like that. Got wiring there ready for Tony. <laughs> oh, look at all this lot, guys. Got more wires here. Tony, if you're watching, <laughs> please wire it up for me. I don't have a clue of any of this. <laughs> Go on there, Steph. There we go, you guys. Straight in, mate. Straight in, boy. Look at that guys, that is our view. We've got the rear steer, we've got our clocks, we've got the steering, we've got all this malarkey. Are you impressed? Very impressed. Just tell me what all this does. <laughs> that is the cut off, so your left hand lane, right hand lane, no idea what that one is. Yeah. And then if you get in trouble, then someone remotely can shut your engine off. So here we've got the fuel pickups, but on this tank, we actually want to have a fitting underneath. So we've got to drill a hole and then we can come in. This junk. Ah, <laughs> my day off. So that is where we got to drill it, but there's foam in there, so somehow we got to get all that out of there. That's all got to come out of here. Oh, Stemp, hold that. Stemp laughing there. Oh, there's a comment I wanted to say, but I think it's probably a bit not, not really advisable, is it? No, we can beep it out. <laughs> Kev's glory hole. <laughs> 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 right, that's one. He's given birth. What is it for, Kev, all that? Prevent slosh. No, go for us, Dev. No, no. Oh, yeah, look at this, man. What? <laughs> oh, that's, right, that's, that's the old pickup. That's the old clunk. Yeah, should we get him out of there and see what? Oh, there we are. What is it on there? Oh, yeah, we can see now. Uh, that's a good idea, Steph. Not there. Not there. Not there. Not there. Hold on, there we go. There you are. <laughs> you were well chuffed when you talked to me about these spanners. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't end up using them. That looks like something else now. <laughs> what does it look like? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> it don't look good, does it? <laughs> Have a go, it's fun. <laughs> Next, we've got this handy little hole saw set. And we've got to make a hole in our tank and then shove that in the hole. <laughs> We get it right first time. Nice little deburring tool. <laughs> Give it a bit of zoom. Go too tight, it's only alley threads, isn't it? I'd be surprised how much they take. Really? Oh, I think we're good. So next. We now have to cut this. It's 
slugging the house, isn't it? Yeah, you're slugging it today. Look at that, that's bang on. In case you're wondering, this piece here is in case something comes up underneath the truck, wants to puncture the tank, you have a little bit of protection. Next, we've got to get the back in there and get all that stuff out. That's the Milwaukee gone. Well, you said they're no good. It's a bit asthmatic. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> What? This is a letdown to Milwaukee. <laughs> this is a complete letdown. Guys, don't buy this. This thing is not very really good. What's it like on these bits here? <laughs> good. Oh, that's going to be a struggle, isn't it? Oh, it is a struggle, man. Oh, oh. I wish it was that thing, man. You might as well buy it bloody Henry. Well, I was going to say it sucks, but it doesn't even do that. No, that's it, man. <laughs> Next, we've got to put all the phone back in. Beautiful. So here, I've just made another bracket to hold the battery kill switch and the fuel pump cutoff cable. And we're going to mount it just there. Boom! So the reason for this little cutout here is, is that when we're sitting in here, we don't want anything obstructing the wheel wells. We want to be able to see where we're going. So that cable goes all the way from that T-switch over there. And it goes down, along here, along there, along there, along there, all along there. And then it goes on here on the fuel pump. And then we've got this little collar thing here. And that screws on the end of the cable. Next, we can hook up the throttle cable. So this little bracket thing holds the throttle cable to the pedal. So we're attached on there, got a little holder thing on there, and I have no idea what this little piece in here is for. If you guys know, let me know. There's another one up here with a split pin in, and I think you can have the throttle cable either at the bottom or you can have it at the top. I've gone for the bottom to keep it all down nice and low. And then we're gonna go the same route with this cable. We're gonna go along here and just follow it along next to the other cable. Same again, it clips onto this little mount thing here. Shut the catch. And this one has a little paper clip that goes through there. So I suppose if that comes off, it's gonna be bad. Then this little ball socket thing goes on here. And the trouble is, it's miles away from there. It's not gonna reach. So I think maybe the cable's gotta be on the upper position. That would bolt on there, meaning it's closer to there, which would give us more cable on the other end. There we go, fitted it on there. Now, hopefully, it's gonna fit. And I'll just bang my head on that thing. Oh, that looks better. Look at that. I think it's better anyway. Now, that bit goes onto that bit, and boom, we're on. Yes! So, I've just had some more fittings turned up. So, this is an adapter, so I can screw that into the water pump and then go over to these AN fittings. And I've also got this nice little white piece here. So we've got to get that into there, then that into the end of that, and then we've got to take a couple of hoses and then go into the engine. And that's all for the water cooling. So we've got this gasket stuff here. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit of it just around the end of these fittings and I'm making the right mess of it. So we give it a couple of minutes just to go off a little bit and then we can put it together. Little bit of lock tight. So next, we're gonna make a hose to go from there onto there and from there onto that one over there. I'm not gonna bother filming it because I've already filmed making a couple of hoses and it's exactly the same. I'll just put you back on when the hoses are ready to go on. So there we go, we've got one hose made and that one is gonna go from there. Who so put an alternator in the way? And then the other end onto here. So you've got radiator, into water pump, into the bottom there, into this piece and into that and then into the block. <laughs> Boom! And here we have our next hose that goes in here. And then we go around here and he goes on there. And then this end goes on our little white piece here. Boom! So next we're gonna make up some brake hoses. <laughs> So next, we've got to bolt it onto the caliper. We've got the union just there, look. Then we're going to go along this four-link bar, along the chassis, and then up to the brake pedal. 
So there we go, it goes all the way along there, along the top four link bar, along the chassis, and then I've just put the front one in as well. And then both the cables here are running along the chassis rail here, up there, round there, and then it's coming out here. I just need to get myself a little union to put into the back of the master cylinder, then we can fit them on and then bleed it and then get it working. Next, I've got to do a little bit of work on the seat. So these shoulder pads here, they're too far apart. Hold on, let me get in and I will show you. Look at that, it's got so much gap there in between the shoulders. My head's going to be held in there with a the helmet, and then if you have a dirty side landing, these shoulder pads are not going to hold me in. So I think I'm going to put a cut across the back here, bend it in a little bit, re-weld it, and modify this lot, and then bolt it all back together. So first of all, I'm going to take them off to put the cut in there, and then we get them back on there, and then we'll push it in. I'm going to take them off off the camera because only four screws, and I can't film and do it at the same time. <laughs> So, got them both off. This is where I want to cut it, just through here. Hopefully, I can leave that lens, give it a little bend. If it does fracture, we'll just get another little weld through there. Obviously, here, it's going to open up and get wider. So, I've got this tube here. Hopefully, I can cut this into shape and weld it on, and it will be good. I wanted to use my hacksaw, but I can't find it. No idea where it's gone. Been missing for bleeding months. So, I may as well just buy a new one. It was hanging there at one point, but it's not there anymore. But no big deal. We have this. So now let's bolt them back on and see how it looks. So there we go, we got one of them back on. It's better, but it still needs a little bit more. So we got it back in the vise. I haven't got the energy to bend it, so we've got muscle man in the house. I've done it that far and I can't do it anymore. I haven't got the muscle. Oh, that moved a lot. <laughs> right, so here's our very professional jig. A little bit more and we'll be good. <laughs> Boom. Vin is the man. <laughs> so temporary guys, we're gonna get a new seat. But for now, this will do. Ho <laughs> ho ho, boom. I don't think you're gonna get much closer than that, are you? Thank you. It's better, huh? Still steer. Now if we have a dirty side landing, it's my shoulders holding me in and not my head. So I've just cleaned it up. I've made these little brackets here that can go over the top here. Oh, on there. And all we gotta do now is weld them on. Now welding aluminium is very finicky. If there's any dirt or any contaminants on the metal, it's not gonna wanna weld. So I sanded it all down. Then I went over it all with a die grinder to try and get all the sandpaper out of it. Then I wiped it down with rubbing alcohol. So hopefully it's gonna be clean enough and it's gonna weld. There we go, not perfect, but it will have to do. So next, I'm not gonna bother bolting them back on because we've got to take this seat out again. And we've got to finish off welding up this frame and then we've got to send it off and get it powder coated. So I've just had my little brake fittings turn up and these go into the back of the cylinder and then we can attach the brake hoses. There we go, there's two of them. Now we get the hose and attach it. Also, just bolted on the starter motor. I didn't film it, but there's only two bolts under there to hold it on. So that engages there to the flywheel, or flex plate, as you lot keep telling me what it's really called. Take all these brackets off the dash again so we can get them powder coated. These brackets there need powder coating. And the tank straps, but I'm not going to bother filming taking all that lot off because there's already videos on this channel of me putting all that stuff on. So I'll just show you when it all comes back from the powder coating. So here we've got all the parts that we need to send off to get powder coated. It seems like a lot more now. When it was on the truck, it didn't really seem like that much. So we just got to finish off a few welds on these pieces and then we can ship them off. So this is the HBI Savvy. And the original version came out 20 years ago. And at the time, it was the world's best radio controlled basher. Never before could any other RC car take this much abuse. This one here is the Savage XL, one of the later models. And although it's really strong and really durable, it does have a few problems. The wheel mounting system is absolutely awful. They always round off, they fall off, and they still have not updated that design. The fuel tank, it's a funny shape, so it made the engine run lean as the tank runs down. And also, the differentials were a major weakness. Until now, maybe. Here we have recently released the brand new Savage X 4.6 big block. Looking at it, they have fixed the wheel issue. The tank still looks the same. Maybe it's better now. And the diffs, we don't know yet. We have a 
arrived. There we are, SC models. What are you on about the Raminator? Your new Raminator is all out. Yes, the new Raminator is very loud. <laughs> oh, check it out. He's got it out ready for us. So here we got Sean in the house. Hi, Kev. Check out all these toys. We got car shows, Striders, HBIs. We got the Vendettas. We got the Kronoses. We're going to have to get one of those Kronoses one day and see how durable they are. Kyo shows. Oh, look, Mini Max. What else you got, Sean? Oh, he's got all his Tamiyas. Love a Tamiya. Body shells. Mini cars. Oh, it's a monster truck. Yep, yeah, the buggy version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got diggers. What do you reckon, guys? I'll try one of these one day. What's in here? Are we going to crack, crack him open in here? Yeah. Crack him open. Crack him open. Crack him. Ready? Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Hold on, we've got to do a drop test. Drop test. What do you reckon, Sean? Is it going to last? <laughs> you driving, I don't know. What do you look like? Is it going to last? Not you, no. Anyway, By the way, guys, if you want to come down here, this is where you got to come. We've got batteries down there, more batteries, LiPo, speed controllers, motors, chargers. More Tamiya stuff. Tools, paints. They've got it all. Oh, look at that. We get some proper hexes now. Get rid of them proper crappy old ones we had last time. Hopefully the diffs are going to hold up. Look at that. They got rid of the Phillips wood screws and they've put in some proper Allen heads. Yep, we like that. We like that. But what we don't like is it's still got that same funny little break it linkage thingamajig. So... We're going to get this and see if we can make it more like a conventional setup. Oh, look, another problem that the Savage used to have is that these used to come out like that and then the hinge pins used to fall out. But now, look, it's got a little screw on there and a little cover that holds it in. Put the old armour body clips on there. By the way, guys, if you want to know where we can get these from, I'm going to put a link down below, but it ties it on like that so you don't lose them. But when it comes to wanting to pull them out again, easy. <laughs> So this car has a two-speed transmission, but for some reason, it's not shifting. So we're going to have to try and figure out what's going on with that a bit later. <laughs> so what we're going to do next, I'm going to carry on running it like that for a bit. Then we're going to take it back to the shop and get two speed to work. And then we're going to hit escape park, send it to the moon and see if it's still so tough. Right, let's do it. Here we go. We've got a race coming up. Versus Alex's Benedict. You ready? Alex's Benedict. Ready? Here we are, next location! It's too rich. Everybody in the comments is going to say too lean. We need to warm up a bit first. We're not hitting any second gear for some reason. Right, got wide open grass over here. Let's see if we get second gear. Here we go, flat out, come on second gear. No, no second gear. It's moving though, maybe it's stuck permanently in second. Guys, if you know how to make this thing go into second gear, let me know down in the comments. So here we are, next location. I think the slipper clutch is slipping again. But so next, we've got to try and tune it. The noise are no go, what's happening? Oh, that's flat out. Oh, it's getting better, it's getting better. <laughs> Alright, it's ripping now, but it's still not changing gear. We're stuck in second. What do you reckon, guys? Either stuck in second or we're stuck in first. So I've got a funny feeling it's stuck in second gear. The top end's pretty good, but pickup's a bit, a bit lame. This is actually so much fun. The Savage is, I would, I would say, the world's best nitro basher. And it's got a few problems, but we're going to get it sorted. Something's happened. Ah. Get that fuel line back on. I think we're a little bit lean on the bomb end. I 
on the head. I think the fuel line's probably come off the pipe again, and it has. Oh no, look, we have head damage. And this thing here keeps falling off. We've got to find a way of holding it on there better. There's not really much there to hold it on, really. <laughs> if you guys know how to fix it, let me know in the comments. <laughs> guys, this is the Lossy DBXL 2.0. And it's one of my favorite bigger RC cars. The problem is, it's a little bit slow. Now you could fit a bigger motor and check out the size of this. That's the size of a soda can. But you don't always have to go to those extremes. There is a cheaper option. And that is fitting a bigger pinion gear. Ho oh, ho ho, check out the size difference. Here we are on location. <laughs> So, we're going to do a quick speed run and then we're going to, I don't know actually, skate park or arc. We'll make it up as we go along. Speed run first. <laughs> Fifty-six. Fifty-six mile an hour. All right, next location. Here we are on location, Arc Raceway, and we have some contenders. Aaron's got some competition. What you got, mate? Uh, DBXLE. Oh, same as mine. Same gearing. Yep. Yeah. But he's got better tyres, so I think I'm gonna have to get myself a set of those. Look at that. We got petrol cars. We got more petrol cars over there. And we're gonna try and beat him with a DBXL. Maybe it's gonna work. Maybe it won't. All right, let's go. <laughs> Tires, can I buy your tires? Yes, so we got hardcore Dave over there that kindly lent us some better tires. <laughs> So this is the world's biggest RC car. Just look at the size of it. And inside we have a petrol engine. And it's a little bit on the slow side. So some of you guys have said you want to see an electric conversion. So that is what we're going to do. Oh, check it out, guys. Here we got the motor. And oh my God, look at the size of that. And it's got a clutch on it. Very different concept. I've never seen anything like it on any other electric RC. Next up, we have the speed controller. And look how small it is. It's only 160 amps. No idea how that is going to power all of that. Look at the size of that compared to that. Oh, but it's water cooled. And we've got a water tank. We've got a water pump. And we have a radiator and a fan. We have a piece of metal, some more stuff, and instructions. Off with you. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. We did not want that to happen. We rounded it off. Now I don't know how we're going to get it out. But it's loading. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. Must have a lot of Loctite in there. So if we heat it up. 
hopefully we can heat it up and it's going to break the Loctite off and then hopefully we're going to get it out. We might as well heat up the other side while we're at it. Ugh, what happened? Hopefully we're going to have better luck on the other side. Right, here we go, here we go, ready? So here we have a rounded off bolt extractor set and Martin always has good results with these. Um, me, not so much. So hopefully this is going to get it out. All right, here goes nothing. Come on. Oh yes, it did it. Oh guys, that has saved so much hassle. So this piece here is actually a reverse thread. So when you wind it into there, it winds itself into the head, but it unwinds a screw. Yes. So next, we need to disconnect the fuel lines from the engine. Off you come, come on. Ah, Jesus, come off. That is it. You are not defeating me. Come on, come off. By the way, guys, I want to give a massive shout out to Carbon Cats from Instagram for making me this epic Lamborghini tool tray. Look at it. It's even got that forged carbon on there. Super handy. I'm trying to get the engine out this time and leave the transmission in. Last time, when we done the ATCC conversion, we took the whole transmission out with it and it was a massive, great big hoo-ha. And this is as well. Right, the engine is free but we can't get it out because it's hitting on this side plate. Now, some people, they cut this piece out and you can, but I want to bash this pretty hard. I want to send it to the moon and I want every bit of strength in the chassis that I can get. I feel by cutting this piece here out, we're going to weaken it a little bit. So if you're not bashing that hard, go ahead and cut it out. If you're going to bash it hard, maybe good on this, leave it in there. So we no longer need a throttle servo, so that can come out too. Next, we gotta get all this wiring off the engine and then we should be able to take it out. So now hopefully this whole jalopy should come out without having to kick it. Maybe, maybe not. Yep, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And yes, it's out. So next we're going to give it a quick clean up in here and then we can fit the new motor. Get a little bit of brake cleaner in there. Then we can give it a wipage. Beautiful. And you know what else I just noticed? I didn't actually have to take any of that lot off. I've made extra work for myself. Anyway, here we've got the new motor and apparently you're supposed to have these water outlets at the top. And it goes in like that. There go. And there we go, ready for action, montage time. <laughs> uh -huh, here we are on location. My God, it's windy. Oh, oh, that's pretty scary. Got Claire in the house. That was already 16. When it had the petrol engine in it, we done 20 mile an hour. I'm hoping we're going to get 30. What do you reckon? Yeah, 30. Yeah, I think easy. Whoa! Get it out. What? <laughs> that's flat out. Well, that's full speed. Scary, that thing coming towards you. Right, what is it? What is it? What is it? 27. 27. That's not bad. There you go. 27, not bad, we thought 30, but it does look a bit slow because it's so big, but we are going to gear it up. So have a little play around here, and then we're going to hit skate park. I'll tell you what, it's definitely weird not really making any noise. Footage! 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 Footage doesn't work! Here we are on location!
<laughs> right, so next yeah. we've got to hook the raminator up so it can tow that somehow. So these new 100 kg servos have a load more power. I am running the old version one servo savers, they're a lot softer and it makes the servos last longer. Oh! 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 oh okay, rescue him. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> rescue me, Claire. There we go. All right, here we go. We're going to go to the moon in a minute. Holy crap! <laughs> oh, I got a bit close. It is scary, isn't it, this thing? All right, we're going to go flat out this time. I don't know if these old version one shocks are going to survive, but we're going to see. All right, here we go. Flat out to the moon. <laughs> right, so Claire is now trying to recover the behemoth. Uh, come on, uh, <laughs> Go on, pick on it. Go on, pick on it. <laughs> oh, you win! You win! <laughs> nothing's broken at all. Look, the whole thing is good. No bent shocks, no nothing. See if you can do footage. No hands allowed. No hands allowed? Yeah. Oh man, look at that. Oh man. Go on, show us that footage. Look, footage. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh. We've got to put the gearing up actually. In here, we've got some gearing. We can change it over, make it go a lot faster. All right, we're going to ride it. We're going to ride it. Oh, check it out, guys. What do you reckon of this? It's definitely something different. Back. Let's see if it comes off. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. look at that, guys. We have a disc brake on the rear diff. So I'm guessing on the radio, it's going to have a switch so you can hit the handbrake. That is going to be fun. I can't wait to try it out. Here we got the powerful brushless motor and speed controller combo. Coilover shock. Chassis stiffener. Are we going to see if it's working? What else does it say on the box? It doesn't say anywhere how fast it is, but we got a GPS, so we're going to check it anyway. We have heavy-duty drivetrain. We have strong composite chassis side pods. What else? What else we got? And we have all this stuff. Now Success, baby. All right, here we go. <laughs> Plenty of power there in the steering. Oh, very impressive, guys. Since I've started using these Spectrum servos, the steering on these armors has gotten a lot better. Look at that. Check out the speed and power of that. For stock. That's good. Here we go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ooh, actually, while it's down here, we may as well have a look at a little size comparison. So here it is compared to a Savage. Here it is compared to a lossy DBXL. And here it is compared to the mighty Raminator. You know we got to do it. we got to do the staircase of doom. Is it armor tough? Is it going to survive? Oh, ho, 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 no. We're still good. Right, that's enough horseplay. Let's get it out and see what this thing can do in the real world. And also, I want to chuck on this high-speed gearing at some point and see what difference that makes. Here we are, on location. And what do you make of this car, Claire? Feels like a bang good special. Ah, oh, don't be like that. What do you guys reckon? Comment down below. <laughs> that was 12 mile an hour already. <laughs> Quick speed run, and then we're going to hit the skate park. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Oh, 47. So we're going to get the high speed gearing on it later. Maybe not in this video. We're going to hit a skate park in a minute and it might be broken. But if it survives, we'll high speed gear it and we'll get a high speed run out of it. That's handbrake. Watch. Ready? Ah, look at that. That's more good. Oh. I wouldn't trust him. He's dodgy. Right, here we are on the next location. How long is it going to last? We don't know. <laughs> you don't know. We don't know neither. Right, here we go. Any rib? Oh! This car doesn't look like it's going to handle well, but it actually really does. You know what? It's really nice. Oh! Tumble Wumble. Put it. I think it's time we went to the moon. Over there is the suicide jump. If you take a run up through there, flat out and hit that, sometimes it's going to go all the way up there. <laughs> oh, that flew. Oh. What do you reckon? Is it all right? Of course it's all right. It's armor oh. tough. Oh no, it's not all right. <laughs> all right. Hey, there we go, look. Put that back in and we'll be back to, to fire. What, what's it called? Fire. Fire force, is it? Fire team. Fire teaming. Oh my Alright, so next we're gonna try and get it in that bin. You reckon? Maybe. I'm gonna give it three goes. <laughs> oh no. Hold on, I've got a better idea. Run up, run up across there, hit that, and then clear the hole off. Here we go. Oh, easy. Yeah. We survived location number one, so I think we've got to do a chassis straighteners test, and then location number two or three or whatever we want. <laughs> oh, but I don't like this. <laughs> do you know what? It's still straight. Maybe they're using it? better metal. <laughs> it's straight. Yeah, it's had some bad landings. So next location, we're going to see if it's still going to stay straight. Subscribe. Here we are, next location. Yeah. Oh, that one. <laughs> no, this is actually good. So here we are on the new location. This is where we have the suicide ramp. Uh, if it's going to get carnage, it's probably going to be here. So far, it's looking good. No damage. Chassis still looks straight. All right, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll give up with this for today. Keeps falling off. Skid mark. I reckon it's suicide jump time. We've actually got two suicide jumps here. So the first one is you hit that ramp there, you hit this one flat out, and you have to try and land on the downslope of that. Second suicide jump is you take a run up from that, hit this, and you have to clear the railing. If it goes wrong when you hit that railing, game over. If it goes wrong when you land on that edge, game over. Oh, I'm really impressed with it. I like the way it handles. I like the way it drives. Durability-wise, seems good. So far, we're looking good. It's not sounding. Yeah. yeah. I want to take the run up from there, and the aim is, is to land here. And if that happens, then we can go flat out and go smoke. Oh, no! Oh! How did it land? That was nasty landing. Oh, I'm a tough baby! <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so that was suicide jump number one. Let's try suicide jump number two. This is the one where it's going to bend the chassis because if that lands on that, game, game over. over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beast. Link down below. You got to get one. I'm actually really, really impressed. <laughs> I hate saying that about them. <laughs> Hey, you like it? Damn it! Do you want to go? No, I've had a go, I don't like it. You don't like it? How can you not like it? There's something about this that is really, really cool. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's almost the same parts as the Creighton and Mojave's and sort of mashed up onto that. But, guys, I really like it. I'm not really a body-wise, not fully sure. I think it's going to get a bug body. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it to suck, didn't you? <laughs> All right, let's put on the high speed gearing and then we'll send it to the moon again. So we're taking this pinion off and we're going to put this bigger one on. Let's got one of these safety pinions in there with an e-clip on the end. So I'm going to battle away at that and then we'll put you back on when it's ready to whip. <laughs> Boom! There we go, got it all on there. So now, let's let it whip! So, we have the GPS back on there. We're going to give it a speed run across the grass. Normally going on grass, you lose at least 10 miles an hour, maybe more. So let's see how fast it goes on grass with the new gearing. Oh, by the way, who's hungry? No. No, it's wet. You sure? Yes. Are you really? Go on then, do it quickly. <laughs> Oh, it's delayed! <laughs> oh, what happened? So that was 11 mile an hour. Right, let's see what it can do on grass. Here we go, flat out. Oh, battery's gone flat. Ah, oh, battery went flat. So that was 44 mile an hour. Battery's off flat. Right, let's see if this chassis is still straight. And then we can take it back to the shop, charge it up, and then do a speed run on this new gearing. Go on, shove it on there. Oh, we are no. starting to bend, <laughs> but not bad. So coming up, Scorched RC or M2C Racing chassis. So just charge up the batteries and now we're going to go and rip again. We are on the next location. We've got the GPS back on there. We're geared up. Oh, definitely more lively. How fast is it going to go? 63. Oh. I thought that was coming at us then. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? 58. Hey, 58 mile an hour. Come on. Guys, super impressed with this. So this could be the world's most capable radio controlled rock crawler. In this video, we're gonna find out. So this has got a couple of features that gives it an unfair advantage. And I'll show you what they are in a minute. So special trick number one, massive amounts of suspension flex. That is gonna help it off-road. Special trick number two, it's got this Ultra 4 competition style tube frame chassis. And what that does, it exposes all the wheels and gets all the bodywork away from any obstacles. So that is gonna make it a lot more capable. Also, trick number three, check out the massive amount of diff clearance. So that is partially due to these portal axles. On a portal axle, the center of the wheel is here and the axle is higher up. If we have a look at a conventional axle, the axle is in the center line of the wheel. So diff clearance wise, we can get about two fingers in there. Then we come over to the portal axles, we can get one, two, three, almost four fingers in there. Are you impressed? Now it's got one more big major trick up its sleeve. And we're gonna show you that in a minute. But first, let's have a look to see what else we get in the box. So you get instructions, controller, so you can do it one handed, power. Oh! <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to go that fast. It's only a crawler, and for a crawler, that's pretty fast. Oh, what is this? Oh, <laughs> first victim. Guys, for a crawler, that's pretty quick. And look at that turning circle. That turning circle is one of the best. But we have another secret trick up its sleeve that should make it even better. So here we have the front steering servo. And if we come around to the rear, there's another one. Now all we got to do is figure out how to use it. We have a switch here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh dear. So now we go from this turning circle to hit this a couple of times and steer to lock to that turning circle. What? So in a minute, we're going to see how well that performs in the real world. But first, I want to try the staircase of doom. Not many cars can make it down the staircase of doom without falling over. 
Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Something tells me that this crawler is going to be really capable and completely outperform everything. So next, let's see how steeply it can crawl. I've lost my little angle meter that I normally stick on there, so we just have to get it. I usually keep it up here, and it's not there. Oh, hold on, hold on. We found it. We found it. We can see how steep it can go. All right, let's see. So 52 degrees, 53 degrees. Here we go. Straight up. Can we do more? 53.8. Yep, still doing it. Can we do more? 55.5. Yes, we can still do it. Now, guys, not many crawlers can make it from here onto here. So far, I think, if I remember correctly, only two cars can do it. Number one was the 6x6 because of the long wheelbase. Number two was this one because we put a whole load of aluminium upgrades underneath it to make it bottom heavy. Oh, and the rock bound. So we've done it with that as well. But that's also got a whole load of aluminium underneath to keep it heavy. So let's take this off. And see if this one can do it. If this can do it, guys, it's going to be a contender for the world's best crawler. And oh, it needs a little bit more steepness. That is right on the limit. Can it do it? Can it? Oh, tumble one ball. Oh, 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 yes, he did it. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Guys, I've got a really good feeling about this car. So here we have the Traxxas TRX4. This one here has got remote locking differentials. You can unlock the differentials and lock the differentials from the controller. On the axial, the diffs are permanently locked. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing because it keeps things a lot more simple. And personally, I'll just leave it locked all the time anyway. This one also has a high and a low gear transmission. This one doesn't. But anyway, let's get the body on this. And then we'll take them both around this quick little track that I've built here. And then we're going to take it out in the real world and see what it can really do. Here we go. And first of all, we need to make it around this gate here. And we have no four-wheel steering, so we have to be careful. Now, I'm not expecting this car to do better than this one. Because this is like a scale kind of road car. Whereas the axle is a scale competition car. But anyway, we're going to get some idea of the comparisons, what they can do. So far, the TRX4 is actually making it easy work of it. But can it make it up and over the top of these short course trucks? Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. Oh, and we did it with Tumble Wumble at the end. Next, we have the axials go. Let's see how this can do it. As much tights as steering, and with that rear steer, oh, check that out. It gets around there so easy. You can do it. It definitely feels, oh, I was going to say more nimble, and it's already failed at the first obstacle. All right, so now let's see how easy we can make it over the short courses. And straight over. So obviously, this course was not challenging enough, and there wasn't really much between them, other than this one being more nimble. Now, these tyres don't feel like the grippiest, but in a future video, I want to maybe try and fit maybe a set of these bigger and more grippy. Right, that's enough waffle. Let's get it out in the real world. So I want to see how well we can keep up. So when you're ready, TRX4, straight over, TRX6. Oh, is he going to need a hand of God? So one hand of God. It's raining now as well. We should make I think you're going to need another hand of God, mate. Oh, there we go. Now let's see if we can do it. And we have rear wheel steering. So look, I can hit the steering over like that. Get the rear steer back straight again. That really helps. Can we make it over this bit? Hello. Come on. No, so hand of God. So your TRX4 made it over that. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, can we do it with the cat button and the four wheel steering? Oh no! Finger of God. Yo, yeah, hand of God. It's all getting slippery now. You've got advantage of a two speed transmission. I do. Oh! I think this has got a tyre disadvantage. The tyres don't feel like whippy. Come on. Ah. Six wheel drive, here we go. Ah, no tyres. All right, there we go. This is the world's biggest radio controlled rock crawler. And in this video, we're going to try and pull a car with it. Now we tried to do it before and the transmission started clicking. And if we'd have kept going, it would have probably stripped out the whole entire transmission. So here we have a few upgrades. We have aluminium axle housings from Trill. We have diff gears, heavy duty from Trill. Also have some parts from GPM Racing. So we're going to stick it all onto there. Then we're going to test it out and then we're going to attempt to pull a car with it. <laughs> 
Oh, also, guys, we have something special in this box. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But first, let's get wrenching. Yes. This is machined from a solid block of 7075 aluminium. Se We gotta get a bit more grease in there. Lid on. Oh, these bits are fiddly. Boom! And there's a the front axle done. Just check out the quality of it. Right, next, we gotta do the rear one. I'm not gonna bother filming that one because it's the same almost. <laughs> Boom! There we got the rear axle housing all assembled. Next, we have to drive shaft. All right, time to look in the box. So we've got a GPM brass front diff cover or rear diff cover. Uh, we're gonna leave it off for now. We might fit that in the future if we feel like we want a little bit more weight on the front. We've got a rear spare wheel carrier thing, but I'm not gonna use that. And here, here we have, are you ready? Are you ready? Get the drum rolling. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Guys, check it out. These are alloy wheels for this. Imagine how cool that's gonna look. Now I'm waiting for some new tires to come out. These are the ones that I'm after. They're the Proline High Raxes. No idea when they're gonna have them in stock, but as soon as I get them in stock, I'm gonna get myself a set, mount them onto here, and these are beadlock as well, so you don't need any glue, and then we're gonna test them out. Before we try and pull a car with it, look at that, we've got a skate park. <laughs> Oh no! Does that mean you can open it again? Oh dear. It's um, finished. It doesn't work anymore. Oh, it lasted one jump. <laughs> oh, I think we found a problem. You see that wire there? The button for the speed controller. When you push down the axle, look at that. It's trapping the wire and it's actually cut it. Just to there, look. So we've got to join it back up again and then we're going to see if we can pull a car. I want to try a couple of cars. We're going to try my brother's car, which is like a small car. And then afterwards, I want to see if it can pull Andy the Landy. Here we go, moment of truth. Is it going to work? Yes! Oh, look, it's just, it's not doing what I tell it. So I'm trying to steer, look, and then we try and accelerate. Whoa! What's it doing? If anybody knows what the hell is going on here, let me know in the comments. Oh, this is stupid. Ah. So before we can try and pull a car with it, we've got to try and fix it. I'm guessing the problem is this. So I've got a battery here, so let's plug that in instead of the speed controller and see if the problem is with the receiver or with the speed controller. Controller on. What is... What? I'm confused now, guys. So we're powering it all off for that, and the steering doesn't want to work properly. I wonder if the steering servo's burnt out. So let's unplug this battery, unplug the steering servo, and plug this speed controller back in. And then if everything works as it should, we know it's a dodgy servo. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. So, battery in, switch on. Ah! Oh, what, what? What the hell? Jesus! Come on, what's going on? Oh, damn you! What the hell is going on with this thing, man? What the hell is going on with it? Horizon Tough, baby. So let's unplug the battery, unplug the steering servo, because a broken servo could be confusing the speed controller. We'll plug the speed controller back in. Controller's on. So we plug the battery in. And turn the car on. Okay, so steering, nothing, because it's not plugged in. Here's the gear change, and that is working as it should. Oh! 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 What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, come on! Jesus! What's going on with this thing? So the servo's faulty, and either that or that is faulty. I don't know what. Right, that's it. We're getting a hammer.
When in doubt, give it a clout. All right, so let's put it on. Okay, here we go. Ah, so that's working. Gear change is working. We appear to have fixed all this stuff. Plug the servo back in. Uh, no. No, servo doesn't want to work. Ah, 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 what the hell? Actual tough, baby. Ugh. Maybe this is going to fix it. Oops, it's moved. All right, let's put it on and see what happens. Okay, will it steer? No, not really. Ah, oh, run, run, run. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on stop. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Carnage everywhere. Poor Ramelator's got it. Hole in the wall. What happened? Right, one last chance. Oh, it's not sounding happy. All right, let's change it. Let's put a new one in. What is that thing doing? Oh, I've just noticed, guys, this new servo that I've got is actually bigger. This is the servo that came out of it, and look how small it is. This servo came out of that, so it's probably got more power, and so it doesn't actually fit. But Trill have this handy little adapter plate, and if you put that in there, then it will fit, hopefully. So that goes in like that. Now we get the bigger servo and put it in the hole. Now we've got something to screw it to. Uh, that one doesn't fit properly, look. It's got a big gap under there. But I've got another trill one. So maybe this one's going to work. Take this out again. Any minute now we're going to see if we can pull a car. And in with this one. Right, now let's see if it works. Please work, please work. All right, well, we've got steering and we've got go. Car pulling time. Here we are, next location. We've got the tow rope, we've got the brother's car. If we can pull the brother's car, then we're going to try and pull Andy the Landy. What do you reckon, bro? It's got to pull the 106. Is he going to pull Andy? I don't reckon he'll pull Andy. All right, let's do this. So on here, look, the GPM bumper actually has a towing eye. They must already have known what we're going to do. So you're going to put this little shackle thing in here. And we can get out on there, just like that. <laughs> Recovery team coming up. I wonder what normal people are going to think when they see us doing this. Oh, what are they doing? Right. All right, here we go. <laughs> I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've got to see if we can pull Andy the Landy. Are you working, people? Are you going to do it? All right, here we go. You ready? It's doing it. It's going. Oh yeah, it's going now. Easy. <laughs> what? How? Help! Help me! We live! We are alive! So done it, there you go. So this is the Traxxas TRX6 with the Mercedes G-Wagon body shell. And it's probably one of the most capable crawlers that I've got. And yes, we have a few of them. But in this video, we're going to make it even more capable. And for that, we've got all these upgrades here from Trill. And we've got a more powerful motor that's going to make it go faster. And also, it's going to make it crawl more control. So we're going to start off by fitting the front axle. Oh, check out the quality of that. Here we have the hub carriers, and these are made out of brass to get some extra weight down low on the crawler. That's going to mean it's more stable, you can crawl it up steeper, you can get better side angles. A bit later on, we're going to show you. Here we have the uprights, and these are also made out of brass. 
and the portal covers with a lot of weight down low. Here's the motor and speed controller combo that we're going to use, and this is the Hobby Wing X550. Also, we have a super heavy duty servo, loads of speed, loads of power, all this extra weight. We need more power to steer the wheel. Guys, check out the quality of that full metal cased, full metal gear. <laughs> Look at the quality of this, guys. Next, we have to do this one. Boom! So next, we've got to build up the housings. So here we can see how the diff locking mechanism operates. Here we've got the cable. When the servo is pulling on that, that moves this little lever here. Oh, hold on, it's all falling to bits. And as that moves, look. Oh, it did. And as that cable moves, look, it moves this little lever here, and then that moves these little dog teeth here in and out. So like this, diff locked, like this, diff open, and it can just do differentialing. A bit more of this grease in there, and get the lid on. When you're using the pinion that comes with the motor, you want to make sure that you use motor hole mount D. Look at the speed and power of that. I wonder how well it's going to do it on the carpet. Most cars cannot steer very well on carpet. <laughs> Look at that. That servo doesn't care. All those 36 kilos working away. And now for the power. Oh, wrong way. It takes a while to kick in, and then he let off. It takes a while to let off again. And Jason from Redfin Models says he knows how to fix it. So let's go down to Redfin Models, get him to fix it, and then we're going to take it out for a rip and see how good it actually is. Here we are, Redfins. Here he is. Apparently, Jason's got something for us. He used to be handcrafted. Scale replica of, um, was it Trent 1000? You got that in specially for me? Well, no, I, I have a good idea what we can do with this. Oh, <laughs> what do you reckon? Rip it. <laughs> <laughs> for it, yes. What do you reckon? Comment down below. Look at the size of it. We can rip a motor, that bad boy. All right, yeah, we're going to buy it, Jace. Yeah, I mean, there was a customer admiring it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pack it up. Bad times. How long did it take to build it? Oh, yeah, well, it 280 <laughs> hours of printing and um, about the same with designing. <laughs> Jason is now setting up the speed controller to do what we want it to do. The jet engine over there is going to get it soon. <laughs> Subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, Disgraceful. <laughs> reverse, clockwise. Right, so settings. Forward reverse, that's cool. Cut off intermediate's fine. Throttle matching, I normally do. Is it sorted? Yeah, switch it off and then back on again. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah, that's better. That's yeah. responsive. Cheers, mate. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so next, we're going to take it somewhere and see how good it is. Oh, check out these Tamiya's, guys. This Top Force Evolution. That was my dream RC car when I was a kid. I couldn't afford it, so I went for Manta Ray. Uh, but um, can I have it? Yeah, I'll grab you one, sir. <laughs> yes, Top Force Evo video build coming up soon. By the way, guys, if you want to come here, this is where it is. <laughs> Have we got a step? <laughs> you got me a new tie here, Kev. <laughs> I walked in, I thought it was like a, some sort of Dyson Hoover. <laughs> Go on, have a, have a look, have a look. Look at that. Technical, isn't it? Have you got any ideas what to do with it? Yeah. What's that? Rip her up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rip her motor. Wow, that's quite smooth. <laughs> look. look at that bearing in there. Look at that. That's, mate, that might actually take something, you know. Quite like that. Is that the biggest you got? Yeah. Got that like going in the back of him. Well, in yeah. incidentally... That all covers comes it's off. It's got a motor mount. Yeah. Oh, stem. It's all rickety, isn't it? It actually looks good in there, Kev. <laughs> oh, actually, look at that. That's the I same think he's put all. a D on there or something so he can put a motor on it so it's slowly supposed to turn, oh, isn't it? We don't do stove stuff, Kev, do we? Oh. 
that it's going to explode. <laughs> okay. well, that's a lot of time, isn't it? Was it 200 hours to build? 400 hours to build? Yeah. Four seconds to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to destroy it? Yeah. Yes. That's a labour of love, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we've got the bumper digging in a bit. But, all right, easy, easy work. So this one has definitely got more bumper clearance. Nice. I think I'm going to struggle with the bumper clearance on mine. And we've got it yet. We're going to see if we can get all the way around with zero hands of God. Right, so now we've got a side slope. There we go, look at that side slope. And David did a side slope. Should be easy for the race. Extra axle width. Side slope there for David. Oh, this is where the six by six is actually helping. Oh, 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 oh. Hand to God, hand to God, hand to God. So this is the world's longest RC car. Trouble is, it's not very good. And you guys wanted to see a better one. So in this video, that's what we're gonna do. The trouble is, an x Max chassis is not flat. So trying to get this sort of bendy chassis onto a flat snowboard, it wasn't very good and it ended up breaking off all the time. And as you can see, it's not on there very good. And also, it's only two wheel drive. And to make it four wheel drive, we would somehow have to find the shaft to get the power all the way from this end to this end. Or do we? So to make this project work better, we need an RC car with a flat chassis. And um, 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 we need a victim. Uh, you will do. So this is the Armour Creighton 8S, and it's got a flat chassis. So that should bolt onto here perfectly. So first, we've got to get the X-Max off of the snowboard, and then we can fit a new car. What happened? Ah! All right, so that fits on there perfect. Drill a few holes, bolt it on there, and if we stick this on the rear. We've got to somehow attach this drive shaft all the way back into there. But looking how flexible the chassis is, it's probably gonna be a bad idea. I think I have a solution. Oh, it's Christmas every day. So here's what I'm thinking. Here we've got the front end, we've got a motor, transmission, everything in there. Then here, if we cut the front of this one off, we can have another motor and have it four-wheel drive, twin motor. And 16S LiPos, yes. So all that we need to do now is screw that onto that and then hopefully it's going to work. Oh, and we've got to fit a motor to the back as well. <laughs> oh, it's coming together, guys.
Are you ready? <laughs> that end's going forward and this end's going backwards. But no problem, all we have to do is get a couple of these motor wires, pull them out, swap them over. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yes, it's working. Oh dear, look at that poor carpet. It's another one of these bloody contraptions. <laughs> get him in, boy. What I think we're going to do is first of all we're going to go for a quick speed run, see how fast it goes and then we're going to go and give it some hell somewhere else. Monstrosity out of here. I'm hoping we get about 50 out of it. Well that, no way. No way. Front speed controller. Back one. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, 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 oh. Mile an hour. Success! <laughs> Look at the state of that. Just where that van is, there's a bin, and someone has to do that. Awful. This bloody door. Stay. Oh. From there, hit that, we've got to land up on top of that. Right, here we go, flat out, to the moon! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, look what's eaten! Look at that! Well, that was pretty durable, wasn't it? Normally, when we did it with the X-Max, the X-Max just landed there. But this thing landed all the way over there. Look, you can see where it landed in there, look. Guys, this could be a long jump record contender in a future video. Uh oh. GoPro's gone. Oh there it is. We got it, we got it, we got it! <laughs> oh there we go. Hello! <laughs> Welcome back! absolutely rips i cannot believe how well it handles i definitely want to take this thing to arc raceway because i really reckon i can win some serious races with it i can just go everywhere flat out and it takes it because normal cars i just want to wheel in flip up and fall over this thing is just planted it just goes everywhere all right skate park over there let's send it to the moon and see how durable it is look flat out i don't have any rc cars that you can go this speed off road flat out look at it if this hit your leg, guaranteed amputation that would be. You want to try it out? No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so when we done the X-Max, that was kind of like a fad just to make a funny YouTube video. But this thing is, is actually good. It's actually functional. We're going to keep it. We, like the X-Max we took apart again, that one we're going to keep. So that is a skateboard thing, as you can see. Here's a mound. We're going to take a run up from across here and try and land it on top of that. If it goes wrong, we hit into that. It's going to be maximum carnage. All right, here we go. Whoa! What the? What? I've never had an RC car fly that far. It normally lands on it or next to it, but not completely clearly. Oh my God! Come on, out. Out with you. Cameraman is not an RC person. Don't get me involved with this. Just mind your ankles. I don't even know what, what forward is or back. He can edit videos, but he can't drive RC. Mind your ankles. Well, I'm getting on this. Stand on here so you don't kill yourself. But don't break it. He's doing a lot for a beginner, isn't he? Don't crash it. Oh. Is he having fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not his, is it? Here we go, here we go. 
Oh. oh, I think he's killed it. All right, I think we'll have to nurse it back over to Andy the Landy. Future video, we're going to speed run it with bigger motors. We're going to do long jump competition with it. Cheers, bro. We're going to see if we can get 100 mile an hour out of it off-road. We're going to see how far we can jump it uh, long jump. And any other idea, guys, comment down below. Ah, so these batteries, they've worked perfectly. No puffing, plenty of power. Oh, this came out. That came out. Normally we light pose, load them up like we did there. We flat out on something heavy. That really tests them to their limit. And these batteries are taking it perfectly. So I was skeptical, but so far, we're looking good. Link to all this junk down below. That was it for part one. Look out for part two coming soon.